All right, Lupe Fiasco's The Cool. <laughs> it occurred to me, I get a lot of requests, obviously, and I got a request for this album. This album's been requested for a long time, very long time. But I got a request about this, you know, hey, Bob, it'd be great if you got to this because uh, I'm about to start school back up again and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll try and get to that. Definitely, for sure. That was July. <laughs> it's April. <laughs> like, oh, it kind of took me a while. I don't know why. I don't know why it works out that way. Sometimes it just does. Uh, but anyway, been meaning to get to this for a while now, a good... Uh, a good solid nine months, at least by that account, for, the, for that story. I remember food and liquor, enjoying food and liquor, but I remember Lupe whooping my ass, lyrically. Whooping my ass. So I'm hoping hoping I do a little better this, this go around, round two. Maybe I can hold my own. One thing I'm going to do here, you can see I've got the Wikipedia page up. Uh, I'm not going to move the window, but you can see this like middle paragraph. If you just go to the, the entry for the album, I want to read this quote here. Because I, I did this too with another album recently, I forget. But anyway, I, basically I want to come in with a baseline. I want to have a general understanding of at least what's happening within the album in terms of like some of the characters or whatever. So that I'm not trying to figure everything out by myself, okay? So I'm going to read this quote here from the middle. This is from Lupe Fiasco. I expand on the story, the story of course being the cool from Food and Liquor. And I introduced two other characters, the game and the streets. The streets is a female. She's like the action personification of the streets, the street life, the call of the streets. The game is the same way. The game is the personification of the game, the pimp's game, the hustler's game, the con man's game, whatever. Then they've got supernatural characteristics like the cool, his right hand is rotted away. The only thing that rotted away was his right hand. It represents the running away of righteousness of his good, which is, that's great to know right there because I probably would have never figured that out. And the streets and the cool kind of have a love affair going on. She's represented by this locket. The locket has a key and it's on fire. And as a gift to the cool on the rise to fame, she gives him the key. And the key represents the key to the streets. Okay. So she wears a locket around her neck at all times. And the way the story goes, she's given that key to tons of people throughout time. Al Capone, Alexander the Great, whatever. She's given them the key to the streets, fame and fortune, but also the prices. The game is represented by a striped, a stripped down skull. A skull with dice in his eyes is smoke coming out of his mouth. The billowing smoke is actually crack smoke. It's not a full concept. That was more spread over It's more spread over like five tracks, really abstractly. Jesus. So I read that. And the first thing that goes through my mind is, well, I even remember half of that. You know, 45 minutes from now. <laughs> so anyway, there's a, there's a female character who represents the streets. There's a, a pimp character that represents the game. There's some supernatural powers. Okay, anyway, so I'll, I'm already feeling like I'm the underdog in this round two battle between myself and Lupe Fiasco. <laughs> uh, let's get into it. It's going to be a long video. It's 19 tracks, hour 10. It's probably going to be a three-hour video. I found four music videos. I don't know if that's all of them, but that's four. That's kind of enough. That's Patreon only. If you join Patreon, it's two bucks. You get an MP3 version if you just want to listen. No ads, no cuts, so not bad for two bucks. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. It's been a little while since I've had something that's like super lyrical. I put on my Crazy GM shirt because I was like, I know Lupe's going to get crazy. I got to like bring my own crazy, you know, so I'll go Crazy GM. <laughs> the first two tracks are pretty quick, 46 seconds in a minute. So I think, I think I'll just let those two roll. Hopefully there's not a ton of lyrics. Yeah, this looks pretty straightforward. I'll let those two roll and then we'll kind of see if we get like a, a, a taste of what's to come. And then we'll really get into the meat of the album. So the opening track, Baby Says Cool for Thought. It's featuring Ayesha Jaco, produced by Ayesha and Lupe, who Ayesha is not. Oh, there's a sister. Oh, okay, there you go. That's kind of neat. All right, here we go. Drop it into the cool which is an, an expansion of that song, which is the guy like fighting his way out of his own grave and going back and all the other shit. I listened to it this morning, although I was setting up, I didn't listen to all the words again. But uh, let's see where this goes. I'm excited. Long requested album. Track one, Baby Says Cool for Thought. Here we go. 
They thought it was cool to burn crosses in your front lawn as they hung you from trees in your backyard. Fuck. <laughs> they thought heavy. it was cool to leave you thirsty and stranded, Katrina. Katrina. He thought it was cool to carry a gun in his classroom and open fire of Virginia, Virginia Tech, Tech Columbines. Freeze. Ha. Because the problem is we think it's cool, too. Ha. Check your ingredients before you overdose. Before you overdose on, on the cool. cool. I'll let it roll into the next part. Track two, free chili. Ha. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I can already tell. When you when you open your album with burning crosses and hanging, you know it's going to be a lot to go through. Holy shit. Oh, it kind of fades down, too. That's surprising. I figured it would fold right into track three and like really kick off the album. Okay. Surprising, surprising start, but no worries. Also, we'll sit there. We're, we're ready for track three, which is Go Go Gadget Flow, which is probably pretty appropriate for Lupe. I really like this opening bit a lot. Because the problem is we think it's cool, too. And this this is something... This is something I think is is extremely important to understand. Especially today, especially these online environments, you know, there's just all this, oh my God, look at how stupid, evil, terrible those people are. Look at how hypocritical they're. How could they believe that? How could they do that? And it's like you can literally, I feel like you could take ad libs you know, the, 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 or what were they called? Mad Libs as a kid, you know, you fill in the words. I feel like there are statements that are made about specific people and you could take those exact statements and just scribble out like the nouns, you know, scribble out, erase the, the ideological part, the political part, leave those parts blank. And then it would just apply to anyone because you see this all the time. You see all the awful things that the one group says about the other and this, that. They all say the same thing about each other. And, you know, I, I feel like the problem is we think it's cool too. all this crazy shit. We, we all have what I'm trying to get to. And I'm doing a terrible job of it is. It almost goes back to the Bible, right? Pluck the, the plank from your own eye before you. What does it point out the speck and the other eye, the other's eye, something like that. Like we need to work on our own shit. We, we all have our own shit we need to sort out. And I feel like there's so much focus right now. I'm pointing at everybody else and looking how everybody else is stupid and they're wrong and they're dumb and how can they? But we don't spend any time looking at our own actions, our own failures, our own faults, our own flaws. Fix our shit first. Fix ourselves first. And that's not easy. And I think the reason why nobody wants to do it is because it's not easy. It's not fun. It takes a long time. You dig up all, all, all kinds of skeletons, right, out of the closet, old bones that you buried a long time ago. It's not fun. But it's like right now, I feel like it's just awful. And the reason why I'm so like kind of like harping on this is because now we've got AI coming. And if you take this idea of people who in general fixate on the flaws of others and then you have all this shit that's going to start coming in that's going to be completely fake that you won't even be able to discern. And you and that folds right into confirmation bias and all this other crap. It's going to get weird, fast, really, like more. Like I feel like it's going to be exponential. This this atmosphere that we see now, I think, I think it's going to be 10 times worse in a couple of years. Anyway, there's my story. <laughs> so let's continue with the album. <laughs> Very disjointed, but I don't know. You guys are usually pretty good at understanding what I'm talking about. Track three is called Go Go Gadget Flow after this quick little baby says cool for thought. It means it's making me think already. It's produced by Soundtrack, track three. Let's drop in and see how we get rolling with this album. <laughs> We have electric guitar, and we have string instruments. Huh. I'm from a city in the Midwest, best city in the whole wide, wide world. Say now, I'm from a city in the Midwest, best city in the whole wide, wide huh. world. Say now, I'm from a city in the Midwest, best city in the whole wide, wide world. Hey, city in the whole wide world. Hey, city in the whole wide world. Huh. I got my go, 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 go,
it flow. I'm back, I'm back, I'm cool, I'm cool. What's up, I'm in a tear. On me, no ghost, no 16 bit like Sega Genesis. No RG ball on the board, soundtrack on the track, Gemini on the job, Shell G on the G set, green Jesus. for the green free chill, and I'm back this on the This guy's already was my ass. You are uh, 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 to, to witness this. New, new, valuable album, too. You ready for the ghetto, get the images. From the M A D I to the S to the O N. Pull in to get your open. Move like a nigga supposed to get the dough when they go with the fuck I'm holding in. What was the guy's name? Inspector Gadget? The cartoon Inspector Gadget? Go Go Gadget, whatever. We have we have electric guitar, we have strings, and we have somebody mashing a keyboard right now. Ha. I I don't know how to process that, but if I take it in terms of like Inspector Gadget, where he has all these crazy things going on at the same time. Like, that makes sense thematically, aesthetically. Like, let's just take all these things and mash them all together like fucking Inspector Gadget would. <laughs> okay, Kurt, then I'm searched with the words to the man up above. Thank you very much. That I got what I got and I'm at where I'm at. Like an A in a circle with a payload or what they say when they see your G from the F to the F with the amazing verbals. Are they racing what a circle the like they're racing a gerbil? I'm racing a circle like I'm raising a horse. I'm raising a horse. Are they racing in place and racing a cage? I'm racing a course. Course. That case in the court did not defer the dream. I am still a raisin in the sun, raging against the machine from the MA. D I to the S to the O N. Pull in, to get your open. Move like a nigga supposed to get the dough when it go with the flow. I'm holding. Huh? Okay. Okay. Pause real quick. Go back. This feels like as crazy as it sounds. This feels like a warm up. Like, and if that doesn't like. When you're recording an album, it's not like they record it all in one shot. You know, all the songs. When it's, it's not like a, a concert performance where he has to like warm up. Or this feels like a warm up. And what's crazy is he's like cracking off, fucking like a machine gun, going super fast. I just want to touch on this second verse here. Well, what was the first verse? The first line of the first verse I think is very important. I'm back. I'm cool. Because what's the whole thing? We all think it's cool. So I think that line is important. And, and having the idea of here's a person who would basically fall in line with all these things that were explained on the opening track who also thinks it's cool and like we also think it's cool you know so I think that's important whoever this character is maybe it's just Lupe himself you know the Wikipedia entry did mention it being spread across like five tracks the concept of the cool and these different characters so maybe this is just Lupe himself and maybe he's like throwing himself into the ring of all those descriptions. I'm on the track. All G-Ball on the board soundtrack. So soundtrack is the producer. I'm on the track Gemini. On the job. Shayla G. Sarah Green's, uh, I think, featured in this track. Or she's in this album, at least. Verse 2. Got the Windy City on my back. So that's Chicago. So on my grizzle. <laughs> like a bearskin rug. So a uh, grizzly bear. Okay. Plus I'm laying on the floor. Blame it on the go. Which would be his flow. Land on the floor. Blame it on... Maybe... You know, maybe blame it on the go. You could change the word out for flow. Plus, I'm laying on the floor. Blame it on the flow. It's almost like its own internal rhyming scheme. But he uses a homonym. Or not a homonym. A synonym instead. Little rapper. Turned out because I'm very plugged. I convert. I can work anywhere in the world. If you ask my brother hug. He'll concur that I'm serious with the words. To the man up above. Thank you very much what I got when I that I got what I got and I'm at where I'm at like an A in a circle oh at okay sure A in a circle so if you you know that's the symbol for at with a pay oh Urkel what they say when they see little G from the F to the F with the amazing verbals I don't that I don't understand from the F to the F well they race in a circle like racing the gerbil <laughs> I race in a circle like I'm racing a horse I'm racing a horse okay all right, all right, let's get, let's keep going. Just just trying to like, <clears throat> Lupe's out here warming up, fucking on the on the speedball, and I'm over here like you know on the treadmill, clocking in at two miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> trying to warm up myself. All right, let's keep going. City in the whole wide world, hey. City in the whole wide world, hey. Hey, hey, don't hate on me. My tank on four, your tank on E. Look good on you, look great on me. Cause I'ma go and never go S-T-O-P. Like, hey, hey, don't hate on me. My tank on four, your tank on E. Look good on you, look great 
Huh. I'm glad I paused too, because I'm a little bit more settled with the production. On the boss, rock to you want time now, I bail the cost. Beyond clean, if you know I'm genius, little rap is sack, Asian mouth. I love my mama in the rum and she raised me off. The 80s baby on fire like safety off. Say now I'm from the city in the Midwest, best city in the whole wide wide world. Hey, city in the whole wide world. Hey, city in the whole wide world. Hey. Huh. I'm trying to take in like more overall, like more than just what the song is doing. Like all the functions. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. So, <clears throat> I almost want to look at that track from like like a 3,000 or 30,000 foot view type thing where it's up tempo, it's fast, there's a lot going on, go, 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 gadget flow. It's kind of crazy. I'm from the best city in the world. You know, happy to be where I'm at, where I'm at. I, I'm cool, I'm back, you know, all these little elements, especially with the production too. Because I feel like after that opening track, the, I mean, the opening track is just like, God damn, concrete punches at the face. They thought it was cool to burn crosses in your front lawn as they hung you from trees in your backyard. Like that's the opening line to the fucking album. You know, Katrina, Virginia Tech, like all these things, these awful things that have fucking happened. Freeze, because the problem is we think it's cool too. And then what's track three? It's, he's cool. He's cool. He's from the best scene in the world. You know, he's got all the shit going on. He's high energy. It's up tempo. It's just bam, bam, bam. Yeah, my tank's on fall. You're on E. Look at me. Look good on you. Look great on me. Yeah, all that. Look at look at all that shit. So I think, in terms of the song, there's a lot of functionality within what will potentially be folded into the album concept. And I'm, I'm going to pay a lot of attention to that because I think Lupe is the type of person who would put that in there on purpose. Well, by the way, I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention in the beginning, this is 2007, 17 years ago, my friends. That's right. That's right. If you're here with me now and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember it being 17 years ago? <laughs> I love pointing that shit out. I love it. It makes me so happy because I have albums that I remember and they're 30 years old. And I go, no, it's impossible. Oh, it's possible. It's coming, y'all. Time's coming for all of us. <laughs> all right, let's move on to track four. In terms of an actual song, Go Go Gadget Flow is cool. I'm not like wildly into it, but that was the first listen. And after that little pause and then you're starting it again, okay, okay. I don't hate it. Not in love with it. It's cool. But let's, let's move on. Track four of The Coolest, produced by Chris and Drop. I was going to say something. It just gone. Well, there you go. All right, track four. The coolest. Oh, wow. So it goes from that upbeat and then immediately drops into this piano. Huh. Okay. Okay. Let's see where that goes then. Stone. The coolest nigga what? 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 I think it's important right now to kind of specify the the cool and what we're talking about when you know we think it's cool all all these terrible things and then we think it's cool too what is the cool as far as i can tell right now the cool is just laughing at these awful terrible things doing these terrible things and and not even really thinking twice about it necessarily you know doing terrible things and being okay with it so if if that's where we're coming from <clears throat> imagine the coolest person you know but the, the tricky thing with all of this and I'm, I'm god this is gonna be a fun video i'm just gonna rant and rave the whole time people who get like really really swallowed up in their own ideology even their own ideas like me i do the same thing i get all excited about my own ideas you see it all the time with music with albums they they can't it's almost like you can't see the other side of the coin 
You know, you get so settled into this thing and you believe it and it's true. And so your opposition is just wrong and they're the enemy. And so it's okay to essentially destroy them because they're so wrong in your own mind, you know? So I, I, want, I just want to throw some of these elements out there because this is what I'm thinking about. When I hear somebody talk about being the coolest, you know, how, how polarized, how solidified they would be in their own ideas and how awful and terrible and wrong the opposition idea would be. It's so much so that it's okay to just disregard them, destroy them, harm them, whatever. Okay? All right. All right. Let's keep going for real this time. The coolest nigga what? The coolest nigga what? Lord, please have sympathy and forgive my cool young history as the coolest nigga what? I go young the coolest history. nigga what? The coolest nigga what? The coolest nigga what? Oh, he was gunned down I love by the law, but sometimes it's like that I love me more. I love the peace and I love the war. I love the seas and I love the shore. No love for no beach. Baby, that's law. But she doesn't see, therefore I spar. I trick, I fall, run up and raw. I love her with all my heart. Every vein, every vessel, every bullet large. With every flower that I ever took apart. She said that she would give me greatness, status, placement above the others. My face with grace covers of the magazines, of the hustlers, paper, the likes of which that I had never huh. seen. Her eyes glow green with the logo of our dreams, the purpose of our scene. Our obscene obsession for the blame. She would be my queen. I could be her king. Together, she okay. would make me cool, and we would both rule forever. Okay. And I would never feel pain. Lord, please have sympathy huh. and forgive my cool young history. As so, I want to read this annotation here. The concept behind the song is that Michael Young history is a major hustler who has been gunned down by his own boss, later rejected from heaven. Michael Young history is introduced in the He Say She Say, and killed in the die. He ends up being too bad for health, so he actually comes back to life on Earth in the cool. Oh, okay. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't even realize that. Okay. So this first verse, she, she, and we, we read the Wikipedia annotation there, or the entry. She is the streets. So the streets. I love the peace. I love the war. I love the seas. I love the shore. No love for no beach, baby. That's law. I don't get that. What does that mean? Lupe uses the plan the similar sound of beach and bitch. Classic interpretation. Oh, it's classic street principle to never love a bitch. Okay. 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 Sure. 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 I trick, I fall, run up and raw. I love her with all my heart. Every vein, every vessel, every bullet lodged with every flower that I ever took apart. And that part, I like the every flower because, you know, she loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. So that's what he's, he's doing there. She said she would give me greatness, status, placement above others. So the streets, right? My face would grace covers of magazines of the Hustlers, which Hustler is a magazine, of course, but you know, double, double meaning there. Hustler is also being somebody on the street paper, the likes of which I'd never seen. Her eyes glow green with the logo of our dreams. Money, of course, the purpose of our scene, an obscene obsession for the bling. She'd be my queen, I could be her king. She'd make me cool, important being cool, right? We could both rule forever. I would never feel pain. Something that, uh, uh, this is great. <laughs> this is great. Like, I'm trying to stop my own rants just because it's like, I don't have all fucking day. <laughs> the rain stops and everything's dry. She would just cry so I could drink the tears from her eyes, teach me how to fly. Okay, all right. Let's keep rolling. This is neat. The coolest nigga what? The coolest nigga what? They were too. I mean, this is track what? four of 19 and so songs. so again, I reign. The Trinity, her and I came. No other man could ever stand where her and I came. Hella hard, umbrella, whatever. Put plywood over pella panes. And pray to God that the flood subside. Cause you gon' need a sub till he does reply. And not one of Jared's. You think it's all Eric. And everything's Irie. A nerd supply. That means a nerd July inside my endless summer that was just uh. the eye of the hunger felix because he is the cleanest
this amongst the younger outstanding achieving up and comers to a crying dishonored baby mama who's the mama to a daughter that I had fathered from afar my new lady gave me a Mercedes and a necklace with a solid gold key like the starter of a car the opener of a door or two pounds of raw you gave me a baby but what about lately then ha 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 right up in her face uh -huh. gee there's more fish in the sea I'm on my mission to beat beat the coolest uh -huh. nigga the coolest, the coolest yeah. nigga yeah. Yeah. the coolest yeah. nigga yeah. 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 the coolest nigga yeah. yeah. this is the incredible coolest nigga what? the coolest <laughs> nigga what? the coolest nigga what? the coolest nigga what? so here we get our really our first look at the cool do you love her can you feel it that's what I got asked so can you feel it she's pregnant so he's probably you know he's probably she's probably asking him to feel the baby kicking or something like that that's why do you do I love her she said or do I love her said I don't know and so I think the question do I love her meaning do I love the streets this other woman I don't know streets got my heart game got my soul and of course from that Wikipedia entry the game is the hustler the pimp side so he's in love with the streets but his soul is to be a pimp. And of course, neither of those people are going to fall in love with a girl, right? You can't do that. One time, Mr. Sunshine would never hurt your soul. I don't understand that. Hurt me soul. Oh, okay. So it's just little allusions to previous tracks. Quote to a crying, dishonored baby mama. Who's the mama to a daughter that I fathered from afar? My new lady gave me a Mercedes, that's the streets, and a necklace with a solid gold key, like the start of a car. The opener of a door or two pounds of raw. You gave me a baby, but what about lately? Then ha 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 ha, right up in her face, G. There's more fish in the sea. I'm on my mission to be the coolest. So here's this woman who is carrying his baby. And what does he do? He laughs in her face. The cool. The cool. And... Uh, I don't know. For those of you who are familiar with this album, you probably know this. I'm excited. I'm having fun. This is my first time going through this. But I, I do want to say, I'll try not to like pound on this too hard. I, I want to touch on it. I want to explain it so people understand that I'm, I'm kind of on the trail. But I also don't want to be like, see, <laughs> you've, had, you've had time with this album for a long time. So I'll, I'll try and balance my um, explanation and an understanding of what's happening versus you know telling you guys what you already know, that type of thing. But here we go. This is the ugliness of the cool. And the light, it, the you know, it's it's April now, and you can probably see the sun, the sun's shining through the blinds, and it's getting in my eye. It's great. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. We'll finish this one up. This is great. Lord, please have sympathy and forgive my cool young history. As the coolest nigga, what? The coolest nigga, what? The coolest nigga, what? The coolest nigga, Oh, it's Michael Young. Mike. Cool. These are the tales yeah, of the cool. cool. Guaranteed to go and make you fail from your school And seek unholy grails like a fool And hang with the players of the pool Fast talking on the hustle And I like the production The kind of like these backing vocals and stuff Because it's almost like a uh, It's almost like the sound of a downfall Especially with this idea of no room in heaven and no hell, like a fallen angel, but you don't fall anywhere, you just fall. No one will receive thee. Ah, that was cool. I like the coolest. Something something that matters to me is obviously I enjoy lyrics and other stuff, but there was a there was some something that came up last night on Twatter. It was some people talking about 2093 by Yeet and how they don't like it and then whatever. And I don't understand why people like it. And I, I wrote this little thing talking about you got it. For me, it helps to understand the concept of the album and all these different like voices and relationship back and forth are all voices inside his own head. And 2093 represents him trying to reach sobriety. And so I love 2093 because the lyrics add so much to it. And there's a lot of people who don't like it because they're really just there for the music. And I, I totally get that. I totally get that. With this, I think if the lyrics weren't that engaging, I probably wouldn't like that song as much. But because there's so much going on with the lyrics, because there's a story unfolding, because there's all these pieces being put in place, I like the song more. And so for me, like there are, I think there are people who are you know more interested in music than lyrics. And there are people like me more interested in lyrics than music. Like 
I can have an average sounding song, but if it has amazing lyrics, I love it. Or I, it can be the other way too. Like if, I mean, if the music's amazing, then it doesn't really necessarily matter what the lyrics are doing. But for me, basically what I'm trying to say is lyrics can salvage a song for me. Like a, a mediocre song will become good if the lyrics are just incredible to listen to. So that's, <laughs> makes it sound like I'm saying the song is mediocre, which I'm not saying. More so, basically it just gets kicked up a notch because of what's going on inside of the lyrics. All right, let's move on to track five, which is called Superstar. This is the big one, bunch of streams on this one. Uh, it's featuring Matthew Santos, produced by Soundtrack. I don't know who Matthew Santos is. 2,200 listeners, so I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, probably just a friend. Uh, drop it in, Superstar, here we go. Which already the title is fantastic because Superstar, like if you're trying to become the cool, if you're a superstar, man, you must be really cool. But what does that mean in the context of this album? <laughs> All right, here we go, track five, Superstar. If you are what you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear, the camera's here, and the God, this sounds insanely familiar. Matthew Santos. His voice sounds extremely good. Sounds like sounds like Imagine Dragon. But I don't, there's no note. The crowd is here and the lights are on and they wanna show. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a fresh, cool, young Lou trying to cash his microphone check two one two. Wanna believe my own hype, but it's too untrue. <laughs> Brought me to my knees. What if you brung you? Did you improve on the design? Did you do something new? Where your name in on the guest list? Who brung you? You, the more famous person you come through, and the sexy lady next to you, you come too. And then the hit me standing outside of heaven, waiting for God to come and get me. I'm uh -huh. too uncool, unschooled to the rules, and too gumshoe, too much of a newcomer, and too uncool. Too like uncool. Shadow and Laville, I battle with it well. Though I need a holiday like Lady Who Sung Blue, go back, whatever you did, you undo. Heavy as heaven, the devil on me two tons too. If you are ha, 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 what you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear. The camera's uh, here, and the microphones, and they wanna know. Oh, oh, oh. This guy's vocals are driving me nuts because it sounds like, is this the dude from Imagine Dragons? I have no idea. It sounds, it sounds like Imagine Dragons, it, but no, nothing here. Okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> what song is it? Is that Imagine Dragons? There's a song I'm, I'm thinking of where the guy sings very, very, very similar to this. And it's driving me nuts because I can't remember what it is. If you are what you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear the camera's here. So you got to be a superstar to be here. Trying to catch what's what's two one two is that like a zip code or something like that, area code. Check it, check yeah sure sure. Just trying to make money. Office check yeah two one two is a clever extension of this. People lot literally microphone check one two. Two one two is also the area code of New York, which is also where Atlanta Record is, where the record label was at the time. Okay two one two okay that's that all right all right so trying to catch this microphone check. Cash the check, microphone check. Yeah, okay, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Why do I believe my own hype? But it's too untrue. The world brought me to my knees. What have you brung? You. Did you improve on a design? Did you do something new? Well, your name in on the guest list. Who brung you? You. I like this. The more famous person you come through. So he's trying to get in to this show. And they're not letting him in. Then it hits me standing outside of heaven. Well, actually, it's not, he it's not the show. It's heaven. But I think the metaphor is heaven is the show, being a superstar, right? Waiting for God to come get me. I'm too uncouth. Unschooled to the rules and too, gum too gumshoe. Too much of a newcomer and too uncool. So that, I love that right there because you think of, uh, <clears throat> like if he's in love with the streets, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, but this is just where I'm at at the time. I'm, I'm going to, you know, I wanted to have a little bit of insight coming into this, but I don't, I don't want to have it spelled out for me either. So I'm going to try and figure it out too. 
I'm I'm coming at this from the perspective of he's he's you know in love with the streets. He wants to rise up through the streets. He wants to reach that stardom. <clears throat> now we're on a song called Superstar, which would be and it's talking about heaven, but in that parallel heaven would be you know the king of the streets type of thing where everybody knows who you are and, and you're number one and all this other shit but you're too unschooled to the rules and too gumshoe too much of a newcomer and too uncool meaning what not ruthless enough that's where i'm at right now we'll see if that's true or not go back whatever you did you undo heavy as heaven you better wear your shit this is this verse is great the spotlight here is burns hole through the stage, down through the basement, past the Indian graves, where the dinosaurs laid, out through China, and then Mrs. Airliners magnifies. The the spotlight is so bright. He goes on and on and on. And it's important to say, because even with all that, most of it don't want it to fade. We want it to braid. And a braid is something that gets stronger as you weave it together, right? So the more you braid something, the more it gets stronger. Want it to stay. Like the governor called, told him to wait, you know, unshut for so, like, a stay on an execution. All right, let's keep going. This, this is fucking cool, too. No cool sound. The, just the sound of this guy's voice is throwing me off so much because I feel like I've heard this before. And I have no idea from where. Chauffeur, chauffeur, come and take me away Cause I've been standing in this line for like five whole days Me and security ain't getting along And when I got to the front, they told me all of the tickets were gone So just take me home where the mood is mellow When the roses are thrown and my nims are yellow When the light bulbs <laughs> around my mirror don't flicker Everybody gets a nice autograph picture If you uh -huh. are what you say you are A superstar Then have no Yeah, this one gets a heart. <laughs> this is good stuff. I like this other layer of vocals on it. So, what I'm getting from this is, you know, if you are what you say you are, then have no fear. And in, in what I understand, in, in the context of the album, I hope I'm close. I don't think I'm exactly right, but I, think, I hope I'm close. If you are this person who can rise to the top of the streets, then have no fear. Because we're not going to turn on you. But there's this, there's this like implied... Uh, consequence of if you're not who you say you are you know and, and a superstar stardom and fame and also I mean how many times have we seen somebody who's up 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 oh they're at the peak at the top and usually what happens they fall because you kind of have to right that's how it always is it's just like a law of uh, uh, nature or gravity or whatever if it goes up eventually it's gonna come down eventually but it's the how you know how sometimes Sometimes people, they do it right. They get to the top and they retire. Call it good, right? <laughs> it's rare when that happens. But in the terms of the streets, if, if you take that metaphor, the camera's here, the microphones, they want to know if you are what you say you are, a superstar, can you actually do it? You know, I like this metaphor of uh, the show, going to the show, seeing the show. You know, signing autographs and shit. But it's one of those things where everybody wants to be around you when you're hot shit. When you're hot shit, everyone wants to be around you. But then as soon as you're not, everyone's gone. Right? I mean, that that's something they see all the time too. And so I'm just thinking of that concept in terms of like street life and trying to rise up in the streets and become famous in the streets. Because that's a different game than just fame. Ha. Huh. Then have no, if you are what you saw, then have no fear. So really, you take that and you, you combine it with the concept of the cool and ruthlessness, essentially. What will this person end up doing? How ruthless, how much are they willing to do to become the star? Let's keep going. This is cool. Next track is called Paris Tokyo. That's produced by Soundtrack. 
Uh, let's jump in. Here we go. Track six. I know, I know, but I gotta get up out of here, you know? I gotta go pay these bills. I got a show to do. You know? What's cool about One Superstar, time, too, is it's so mom, metaphorical. It could just exist as a song. And I hate to leave her lonely Ring ring went the iPhone It was my homie He said let's hit Japan If we can make them jam We can make a hundred grand Spend it in the south of France Nothing further I jump, grab my go yard trunk Got ready to walk it out Like Unk in my jump And then Chucks That's when I heard murder You're killing me and filling me with sorrow Sunrise goodbyes And missing you tomorrow I even keep your picture in my passport Love, huh. love bit more chill. I like this like kind of playful keyboard in the back. Let's kind of fuck around a little bit. I'm a star, I may be a revoir A spree on St. Henri, then back to Charles de Gaulle So I can get home and tell her everywhere that I've been And everything that I've done And tell her that she's the one And um Let's go to sleep now Wake up and I have to admit, I, I feel like I've lost the trail a little bit here because the she, the she character, from what I understand, is supposed to be the streets. And so you've got this song about traveling the world and this and that, but then you still want to go back to the streets. It reminds me of the track. I don't remember the name of it. If it's off of To Pimp a Butterfly, is it institutionalized? I think so, where he's back in the hood. You know, he keeps getting drawn back to, even though he's done all this shit, he keeps getting drawn back to the hood. I feel like this is kind of in parallel. Well, not necessarily parallel, but like a similar idea, a similar thing. What I don't, what's confusing me and why I, I say I feel like I've lost a trailer is he's talking about going to all these cities. And so I'm assuming this is kind of him himself as he you know gets bigger artist and he's going on tour, but he's st he still wants to go back to the streets. Maybe it's just the character. I don't know. I don't really know. The reason I get fly is Ivy and Jasper. Who is that? Double entendre. Ivan Jasper is a plane designer. Oh, okay. Sure. Credited with creation of the boomerang plane. Ivy and Jasper is a barber who cuts Upe's hair and Kanye's hair, making them fly. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I turn to see my dream. Love, Supreme Queen, which has got to be the street. I don't, uh, the annotation is, is literally the same exact lyric. I don't, I don't really get it. Okay. I love her. I hate to leave her lonely. Let's keep about the, you know, the, the streets in mind. When Ring Ring went the phone. It was my home. He said, let's hit up Japan. We can make him a jam. If we, make, if we can make him jam, we can make a hundred grand. Spent in France. Jumped, took off, you know. That's when I heard murder. You're killing me. You're filling me with sorrow. Sunrise, goodbyes, and missing you to tomorrow's. The meanest thing on the screen cry. I dropped my bags in the flash. That's faster than the 180 on the dash. Short to dry chips. So this is probably like some sort of wordplay. The 180 on the, on like the fastest 100 yard dash or 100. Who fucking knows? Wipe the rain from my dear like Dasher. Here's the dame. Tell the series put on movie reel. So he's. Let's keep going. I'm, I'm trying too hard. Let's keep going. Let's just keep listening to this song. Man. Wherever I go, she goes. That's another thing I feel like is important. Like he's bringing the streets with him, or he just misses it so much he thinks about it. Wherever I go, she goes. Uh, guess who's back in the house with a bunch of souvenirs and a smile for your mouth? I really missed you each and every night. I kissed you in my dreams before I went to sleep. The la la land, I count them sheep. I swear you're looking prettier than ever It's got to be a prophecy for us to stay together evermore For better or less support All worth awaiting buried treasure exes on the shore uh, I know my world tour's like war to you But Ian said aloha And Hardy said cheers Julian said bonjour Big O was like yeah Amanda uh -huh. and Lamessi <laughs> wanted to when we going there There's a little bit of lo-fi pop Yeah right there It's cool I'm cool with this one too I like it So 
trying to fold this track into the concept of the album, of what Lupe spoke to in that quote off of Wikipedia there. And in this verse three, guess who's back in the house with a bunch of souvenirs and a smile for your mouth? You know, imagine, imagine you're trying to be cool. You're trying to have fame in the streets. And one of the things that you as a person can do is tour the world and this and that because you're a rapper and all this other shit. Now, I, the, the problem with what I'm about to say is that I'm kind of like blending the idea that he has put in the album into his own life. And I don't know how much that translates. I don't know how much he's like blending his own life into the, the metaphor. Anyway, but, you know, how do you how do you prove you're cool? How do you kind of become known and famous? Well, you come back with all these souvenirs from all those places you went to and show it off. Right. And if you've got a little bit of money, you can buy these different things. Earlier, there's a song, you know, talking about this obscene obsession with bling. So these souvenirs are these, here's some different bling to show off when you get back. It's got to be a prophecy for us to stay together ever more for better or less, for better or lesser poor, or worth our weight in buried treasures, X's on the shore. I like that. I kind of like that line right there. I know my world tour, my world tours like war to you. That line's important because I feel like that is a, uh, jealousy right there you know the streets and uh, look and look i'm talking out my ass i don't know what it's like on the streets but i'm just uh, just the concept the idea of if you're trying to rise to fame if you're trying to be famous locally for whatever reason in that kind of sphere when you turn your back on it god this is hard to explain there's like three layers going on right now if you take the metaphor that he was talking about earlier, the superstar and being big and famous and all this other shit. If, if you exist in that metaphor, you know, earlier I was talking about, you know, they're all happy and they all want to see you, you have nothing to fear as long as you are who you say you are. But if you turn your back on that, it turns its back on you type of thing. So my world tour is like war to you. It's kind of like his own way of saying, anytime I leave, you get mad at me. And if people get mad at you, that affects your fame, that concept. So, that right there, that it's kind of neat because I feel like it's it's showing a split between two worlds. You can't exist in both, you know. To to exist in one upsets the other. But I had said hello, Harley said cheers, all these different people with all these different greetings. Edison sends his love, so does the rest of the club of the international playboys and playgirls. But I revoke I revoke my membership all for my tenderness. She said. Pursue your interest, because even if I'm ticketless, I'll be there by your side. I'm in your heart, in your mind. I got gotcha. you. Who loves you, babe? So maybe, maybe the streets aren't filled with jealousy just yet. They're still supporting this person. Oh yeah, no, that's fl that's cool, man. Go fucking go. Yeah, yeah, we're here. We're supporting you, but we'll see if that develops. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> what do we? Have? Oh, we're at a minute, an hour, an hour, six songs. Took 54 minutes. That's fine. Track seven is called High Definition. It's featuring Pooh Bear and Snoop Dogg, produced by Al Shucks. Let's drop in track seven, High Definition. Ha. Huh. You know, another thing with Paris Tokyo too, the, the production was pretty chill, which could also imply that the relationship is not fractured. Yeah. Oh wow. That's what it's in the streets to from don't need permission. Nah, my life's in high definition. What? Snoop sounds good. I don't need no permission. My life's in high definition. In my return, it's more like a real. I hold a hole like a teacup. Well, in one hand, while the other hand throw the piece up. My other hand throwing weed without the ear. I got like five more, man, or something like Shiva. <laughs> and that fall of Rome, number four, Deluxe. See, I've been around the world like the gnome, but I come from a zone where the homes all beat up. I made it out alive from the streets of the West Side, CHI. Now, if that ain't uh -huh. home, you better tell them. Wow. A beat, man. Very, very nice. Good sound. This is pretty cool. Track. I like no high definition. Uh, my life's in high definition. And in my, I was about three when the eyes went. But I can see everything that you're trying to be. You can't hide it. 
Why you coming out your throats like a hymn? Like I came up out the belly like a hop script. Only my circumstance revised it. Hijacked the role and went and shot the pilot. I'm trying to go public so I can get the private. Loopy and Snoopy, let's go wild. Tiptoe through the dough, do a doggy style. And tell all my chicks and she I cocko. Loopy hit the lotto, Snoopy hit the bottle. Throw a mic tight, they bite and might follow. Take this chill pill, little nigga swallow. Recital is very homicidal. The big screen will capture it, cause it's high definition. Listen, cooking collard greens in the kitchen, the mouth of bit boys on a mission, if you out to get cash, you better get it quick fast, cause nowadays niggas get to snitching on your bitch ass, even your boys <laughs> best believe in them toys out your game, especially when a nigga know your real name. Different, different style of production, they do. I mean, this is almost borders on a rock song. It's almost borders on like a poppy rock sound that track so pretty surprising production right there some good fucking word plays <laughs> first of all in terms of the overall story and my return is more like a re-up i hold i love i, I hold a whole like a tea world in my hand so he, he splits the line i hold a whole world in one hand but he says i you know i hold a whole like a teacup world in one hand so he, cool way of taking that line, breaking it in half, moving it, sliding this up to make it work, right? While with the other, throw the piece up, my other hand throwing the we without the E up to rhyme with re up. So it's just the W, which is a win. I got like five more, man. I'm something like Shiva. So there's all these arms, right? With winds and worlds and cups and shit. In that fall of Rome, number four deluxe. I don't know what the fuck that means. So I've been around the world like a gnome. I don't know what the fuck that is. Let's click the annotation. The gnome is the mascot of Travelocity. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. I forgot about that advertising campaign. Yeah, good good, good annotation there. Who, who wrote that one up? Oh, three contributors. Well, <laughs> anyway. But I come from a zone where the homes are beat up, the folks unknowns, and the stones all meet up. What are those about the stones all meet up? Lupe grew up in poverty stricken West Side Chicago. The three groups mentioned are well known. Oh, I guess those are all the folks in the stones. Okay, so those I guess are gang members? I don't know. I like this line. Police tap my phone. Got my songs on speaker. And I like that a lot because I feel like it's a way of they're trying to, you know, they're tapping my phone specifically to spy on me, to listen to me, to hear what I'm saying, to hear what I think. While they're listening to the music, which also implies they're not listening to what he's saying because he's probably saying it in his music. So I love that little line right there. So he spat the poems, got the domes all geeked up to get up on their thrones, become young leaders. So they're worried about him, like, you know, inspiring people. Anyway, verse two had some great little word. Well, they all have good word plays, but in my finest, become the hero and the sidekick, the rider and the person that'll ride with. In your ear, like the maple, of, I don't know what a vibrant is. Vibrant thing, stain nation. Oh, I gotta blow, I gotta sneeze. Thank you, mute button on microphone for saving the headphone listeners. Other people I don't vibe with. That was about three when the eyes went, but I could see everything you're trying to be. You can't hide it. I come out of it like the I'm like, I come out the belly like, like a hype script. What is that? Hype script is alluding to Hype Williams, a well-known music video director. Okay. Debut in the famous film Belly. Okay. 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 Good catch there. Some of these guys are great at catching these lyrics. Figuring out. I like this. Hijacked the role and went and shot the pilot. So high, you know, hijacker playing a pilot is is the first of a show series. So that's a cool little wordplay. Vincent busted to go get the pirates. Obviously, fi fix the virus. Overall, in terms of the arc of the story, I don't really know what this is, other than I feel like this is him, maybe embracing uh, the player side. You know, he's in the streets. What was it that he said to the streets? You know, or his baby mama. He loves her, but his soul is is. Fuck, I can't remember. There's so many lyrics to try and remember. Anyway, in terms of the arc of the actual story of this album, I don't really know how this fits. Just it. But cool song, cool wordplays, good rhyming schemes. 
I do like how Lupe his his vocals. He kind of like it's got like a bounce to it. He kind of bounces around. He speeds up and kind of like he reminds me of my cats. <laughs> my cats when they're all in zoomy mode, they'll like jump. You know, he kind of like does that with his vocals. He'll like duh, 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 and then jump on something and then jump. It's pretty cool. I'm having a good time. Let's keep going. Track eight is called Gold Watch, produced by Chris and Drop, who produced the previous track. And let's jump in. Here we go. Track eight, Gold Watch. Ah, trippy. The hard cut. Let's peruse the essentials of cool, a brief study of the things so instrumental to do that make me feel flyer than lobbies of double dues. A disclaimer, just a rhyme, no credentials. Oh, weird. Let's peruse the essentials of cool, a brief study on the things so instrumental to do that make me feel flyer than lobbies of double dues. That sample is already distracting the hell out of me, though. In my fall of Rome jeans, my head quarter wallet, my neighborhood shirt, and my Eddie Chen clock shit. Might not go to college, but my street smart. I like the guitar like the shit. Black yeah. fingernails of that punk rock logic through the knowledge. Man, you can't be punk from projects. Firm disbeliever in your punch clock promise. Yeah, yeah, the niggas over there. It's just, yeah, yeah, now look at what I wear. Got my gold watch. Got my gold watch and gold, gold, gold chain. Fancy car and my diamond ring with my fancy bra and she. I don't, I really don't like the sample being looped continuously through the song. I'm starting to get used to it. I mean, this is first lesson. I've listened to it for a minute and 40 seconds, but I'm finding the sample looping continuously to be kind of obnoxious, honestly. Sample of Do Whatever Turns You On, part two by the propositions. So I feel like there's functionality there, but it's, I, do we read this? It have to loop literally through the entire song. Like, give us a break. A, just a little bit of a break. That's the only thing that's bugging me, but I like how the chorus sounds a lot. Look at what I wear. Got my gold watch, my gold chain. So he's becoming cool. Fancy car, diamond ring, fancy broads foreign. She loves it over here. She loves it over here. But I wonder how that's going to clash. Let's let it keep going. We'll see how the lyrics play out. I don't want to like try and solve the song before, before it finishes up. But the sample looping continuously, I, 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 don't, I don't really care for it. Monocle magazine no, and Japanese wow. manga. Futura Nosferatu's in HDM trainers. I love Street Fighter 2. I just really hate Zanka for me. Ken and Ra 2. I find it hard to be Blanka. Keep a wee ninja hanging in the uncle rap. about the song except for that perpetual sample loop. I don't I don't understand. Anyway, whatever. But so earlier is talking about the idea of you know, if you turn your back on the streets that will upset them and if the relationship is going to fracture cuz you can't do these two things, right? You can't both be a, a have the street life but then also be on tour and all this other shit. You can't be both. I just, I'm going to go through the lyrics. Pursue, let's pursue the essentials of cool. Brief study on the thing so instrumental to Lou, which is Lupe, that make me feel flyer than lobbies of W's. <laughs> Disclaimer, just a rhyme no credentials from a school. In my Fall of Rome jeans, the previous track had this Fall of Rome reference too. What is that? Let's, let's see. What, 
Oh, that's his clothing brand. Okay. My head porter wallet, my hair shirt, any chin clot. Shit might not go to college, but my street smart is polished. So earlier he was talking about he was unschooled and didn't know the rules of the game. He was too uncool. Now he's getting there, you know, like the black fingernails on that punk rock logic. Do the knowledge, man. You can't be punk from the projects. Firm disbeliever in your punch clock promise. I don't understand what that means. Luke, I never liked the idea of having a dead end job. Also, reference the last line without knowledge or with knowledge, you won't have time. You won't have to resort to minimum wage. Okay, okay. Was trading off my comics. I was taking them to school. One of Jay Z's boys. Now I'm skating your pool. I think that's a reference to probably kick push and and just him being a skater, maybe. Not to be rude, I'm just hating on your rules. I'm like a young fifty. I'm on my world tour. So I feel like these are little hints of, hey, you have to do it this way. Well, no, I don't want to follow your rule. I want to do things my way type of a thing. Good morning in Singapore. Bring the song with me. From Robert Taylor Holmes, Africa Slum Cities. <clears throat> and, you know, so he's on tour. He's got his foreign girl. No words, no slang. It's, I'm no trick. I'm no lame. So he's still part of the game. You know, he's not falling in love with her or whatever. It's just so slick that she's so game. And she loves it over here. So it sounds like he goes on tour, but he comes back with this girl and people are cranky about it. Not to be rude, I'm just hating on your rules. <clears throat> Let's go to verse two. He starts listing all these things. He's sandals and sunglasses and shirts. And so he's talking just a lot of clothing and shit like that. Monocle Magazine, Japanese Maga, Manga. Man I can never say... I always want to call it MAGA for some fucking reason. Well, obviously the, 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 we know what MAGA is, but manga, I always, I always say MAGA. Future Nosferatus, I don't know what the fuck that is. Trippy. So he's referencing all this shit. I don't know what any of it is, except for Street Fighter 2. I like that he hates Zangief. <laughs> That's funny. What I, what's, oh, something, something I missed, you know, so stay out of the vicinity of them people over there. It's just now look. So I feel like this is the first hint of maybe the street side turning on him on this character. You got to stay out of the vicinity of them over there. You know I'm doing my thing, I'm doing well. Look what I wear. I got my gold watch, my gold chain, fancy car, diamond ring, and now he's got his ghetto broad and she's so playing at a couple scars one of those long names fights a person cusses with no shame x-men had her bagging up cocaine my most coveted thing is a high self-esteem and a low tolerance for them telling me how to lean so we're starting to get this i'm turning my back on them type thing most of the parts are the ones that are unseen the wings don't make you fly the crown don't make you king god don't like ugly ain't too happy about pretty I am ignorance's enemy. So stay out of the vicinity of them people over there. <clears throat> so he, what, what it feels like is this character is starting to, you know, get cool, understand the rules, starting to learn the game, a little bit more knowledge, doing things his own way. And what's happening in that and kind of like this own rise is other people are starting to get mad about it, you know? And calling, saying, I am ignorance's enemy. That's, that's kind of a shot across the bow right there. Like, I'm smarter than you. I'm better than you. Anyway, we'll see. I don't know. That's kind of the general impression I'm getting. I really want to like that song, but fucking, why did they have to loop a sample for literally 100% of the track? Fuck, man. I don't like things that get way too repetitive. Anyway, all right, track nine is called Hip Hop Saved My Life, featuring Nikki Jean, produced by Soundtrack. Uh, I don't know who Nikki Jean is. Nikki Jean, she actually has an album from 2019, a couple albums maybe. Not terribly active though, 2,800 monthly listeners. Anyway, track nine, Hip Hop Saved My Life. Here we go. Dedicate, dedicate. Oh, this one right here goes out. To my homie with the drink, know what I mean? Uh. He 
reset. I write what I see. Write to make it right, don't like what I be. I'd like to make it like the sights on TV. Quite the great life, so nice and easy. Who is this for? See, now you can still die from that, but it's better than not being alive from straps. Agreed. A meat notebook and a big that clip when it's pushed and a whack ass beat. That's a track that's weak that he got last week. Cause everybody in the stool was like, that's that heat. A bass heavy medley with a sample from the 70s with a screwed up hook that went. Stack that cheese. Something, something, something. Stack that cheese. <laughs> a sister, yeah. Stack that cheese. He couldn't think of nothing. Stack that cheese. North side, so we rocks them braids. 1100 friends on his MySpace page. Stack that cheese, got 700 plays. Producer made him take it down, said he had to pay. Open <laughs> mic champ two weeks in a row. XD boy with a B boy flow. Glow like Leroy, you should see boy go. Got a daddy serving life and a brother on the road. Best homie in the grave, tatted up while in the cage. Minute May got his mama working like a slave. So I think this this track is important. I feel like we're, we're blending. We are doing a bit of a blending of of Lupe's life, I'm assuming. And maybe this is just a character, I don't know, but talking about street life versus going on tour life and those two worlds splitting apart. And I feel like this is more of a concentrated explanation of that, of imagine you grow up in this environment and you've got friends and you wanna do this and you see what other people are doing and they're rising up and you know, whatever, right? They're making money. They got things. That's what I want too. They're just looking at other people and, and wanting what they want. But if you also have this love for music, if you're writing songs, if you're working on this, you can't, you can't devote all your time to both, obviously. And so I feel like whether Lupe's talking about the story in this album or his own life, it feels like a mixture of both. But I can imagine this poll of fuck I want to focus on this I want to focus on making music I want to focus on writing and, and getting songs out there and, and trying to do that and then pissing off your friends who are out doing God knows what because they're trying to do their own rise right they're trying to make their own way and maybe you want to do that too but maybe they're getting pissed off at you because you're not spending time with them you got this you know just that that tear that 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 friction and I feel like this song does a good job of kind of painting the early beginnings of the feeling of that friction, the, the, the strain on a relationship when one side wants to go one way and the other a different direction and how that just doesn't work. Cool sound of the song, though. I'm liking it. This man called said your time might be now. They played your freestyle over wipe me down. They played it two times, said it might be crowned as the best thing out the H town in a while. He picked up his son with a great big smile, wrapped every single word to the newborn child. Then he put him down and went back to the kitchen and put on another beat and got back to the mission to get his mama out the hood, put her somewhere in the woods, keep his lady looking good, have her rolling like she should. Show us home as this away, other than that flipping yay. Bella's home and out of jail, put her lawyer on his case throw a concert for the school show the shoulders that is cool throw some candy on the cat and chuck the deuce and act a fool man it feels good <laughs> when it happens like that two days like from that. going back to selling crack yes sir sir, sir. Never heard of, I push it harder for the huh. Rhyme, I feel it's like murder but hip-hop you saved me one you never heard of I like push it harder for the thug Rhyme, I feel like murder but hip-hop you saved We'll go through lyrics here in a second. I want to click on some of these uh, annotations because I want to see if we can get more uh, detail out of the story. There's some cool little bits in here. So the summary off of Genius says, Lupe tells the story of a young black man who prevents resorting to drugs and murder by making it as a rapper. The song was inspired by Slim Thug and Bun B. Uh, let's see. Right to make it right. Don't like where I be. I'd like to make it like it's like the sights on TV. Uh, this is an interesting contrast from the line of concept. The instrumental reflecting a shift in the role of media. Okay, let's go down a little bit. 
that's a track that's weak that he got last week because everybody in the studio was like, that's that heat, a bass heavy melody with a sample from the 70s with a screwed up hook that went stack that cheese. Screwed up his mixing technique, pioneered by legendary Southern producer DJ Screw. Slows the tempo, lowering the tone of the voice. The following stack that cheese line is the verse demonstrating the ch- style. Yep, 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 of course. Uh, reps north side so he can rock them braids. 1,100 friends on his MySpace page. Oh my God, MySpace. Stack that cheese, got 700 by his producer, make him down, said he had to pay. Here's, here's what the annotation says. It's unreviewed, so who knows. Seven plays, 700 plays might not be much for a song on the internet today, which is true. But in the early days of social media, when artists were just getting started to use sites like MySpace, 700 plays would have been impressive for an unknown artist. Unfortunately, our protagonist was forced to take down the song from his page, presumably due to copyright claims. Yeah, most likely. Okay, I was hoping for something specific there, but sure, general summary is fine. XD boy with the B boy flow. So is that the two? Some thug B bunt? No, I don't know. <clears throat> Glow like Leroy, you should see boy go. Got a daddy serving life and a brother on the row. Best homie in the grave, tatted up on the cage. Minute made, got his mama working like a slave. So he just tried to make it as a rapper. What really stuck out to me was this part right here. Down baby mama who really, who he really had to honor because she was his biggest fan, even let him use her Honda to drive to Dallas, went to open, for the, open up for amateurs, let him keep a debit card so he could put gas in it. The reason why I think that matters is because it's, it's a mention of the baby mama. And in the early portion of this album, the cool laughs in her face. Now, I'm not saying that... Uh, these are the same people, same characters, whatever. But I think that's important in identifying and, and trying to kind of wrap our minds around the cool in this album, in this concept. Because in this specific instance, the baby mama is the one that helps him get the career started. And if you take that and kind of go back to the beginning, I mean, this if you take this concept as like a, a story, this would essentially be a flashback. But now... Now, because in the beginning, early on, he's talking about, you know, getting bigger and getting famous. She helps him get started, and then he turns around and laughs in her face, which is the cool. Anyway, anyway, I, sh- I don't want to harp on that too much. I just want to point that out because I think it's important. Then you get this verse three. His man call said, your time might be now. They played your freestyle over Wipe Me Down. What's Wipe Me Down? I don't know. Nothing. Just another, it's just another generic one. So out of Houston, so the story kind of keeps going. You know, they, they might win the freestyle competition. The best thing they've heard out of H Town. Picked up the son with a big smile, wrapped every word, put him down, went back to the kitchen, got another beat for the mission. You know, trying to get his mom out the hood, keep his lady looking good, show his homies the way, other than flipping that yay. Anyway, so it, kind of its own story. It exists on an island, in a sense, across the construct of the album, which is fine, but. It's cool because it's, it's like a story within a story that feeds the core concept of what we're doing here. You're neat. Cool song, good sound. I, I, I mean, pretty chill beat overall. I like that. I like that one. Okay. Track 10 is called Intruder Alert. It's featuring Sarah Green, produced by Soundtrack. We're about halfway through now. So we'll kind of see how this goes. So far, it's been fun. Lupe has been setting some pieces here and there. I like that the story has not been um, direct. You know, there's been stuff for me to try and figure out still. It's still a bit of a riddle, even though I came in with some understanding. But it's been a good ride thus far. We'll see how the back half goes. All right, here we go. Track 10, Intruder Alert. Uh-oh, this one might be sad. Shit, I'm, I'm reading ahead on the lyrics. Um, yeah. She said there was no love in the heart Cause one day a rapist attacked her and broke that all apart She said there was no way to fix it or to cover her scars Then one day a guy came along that probably could help her start He was sincere, made her believe it was safe for her to trust again Before long she was cool with giving hugs to him Knew that it was right Cause something was wrong The alarms in her mind Didn't tell her he didn't belong There was no I was gonna criticize this chorus Initially Cause it I was gonna say You know This doesn't sound like 
alarming, like a intruder alert. But that's literally what he said. There was no intruder alert. So I feel like this is kind of clever. Like this is one of those things where I appreciate what's being done more than I'm enjoying the actual song. Like the song is fine, but it's pretty clever to take something that is supposed to sound like an alarm and sing it out and try and make it sound pleasant because that's exactly what's going on. The alarm did her mind didn't tell her he didn't belong. There was no intruder alert. So instead of this alarm going off, it's it's being played out as something that's pleasant and in you know warm and enticing, that kind of thing, right? He said nobody else ever loved them. That's why he get high enough to go touch the heavens above him. Vividly remembers every pipe, every needle that stuck from every alley Jesus. he ever slept in, every purse that he snuck in, every level of hell he's been to, and the one that he stuck in, the one he can't escape. Even though it's of his own construction, maybe you can't relate. Maybe you one of those that just doesn't. Maybe he doesn't care. Loves to allow these demons to come in with no. Huh. That's insane. Crossing the boat, he built hopefully strong enough to support her. Praying border patrols don't catch her as processing the porter. Before she reached the shore, the land of the free where they feed you, treat you like equals, deceive you, stamp you, and call you illegal. Uh -huh. true, true, I'm very torn. I'm very torn on this song. I like what's, what they're doing, but I'm not really into the song. You know, I think part of it, I'm just really not, to I'm not terribly into the the sound in general. It's fine. It's not like it's bad, but it's just fine. But then also too, like with the verses, he touches on, you know, this girl and then, you know, the guy who's, you know, drugged out and the, the um, you know, the immigrant and stuff. And, but doesn't really take any of those stories and, and flesh them out. And so I feel like the song is trying to be like this meaningful kind of emotional song and this idea of these intruders and, and somehow an intruder sneaking into either your heart or your life or, or whatever. But it doesn't play out the second half of that story of, okay, and then what? You know, like... Especially too, I feel like with the track, he, there's also this thing of the these people, there's nothing necessarily wrong with these people, right? Like there's nothing wrong with, with someone trying to immigrate to a country and, you know, where there's food and water and all this other shit. There's somebody who's struggling with drug addiction and trying to get out of it, but they're, they got their own demons. Like there's this weird, you know, implication of these people are suffering and they have problems and they're trying to deal with it. And now there's this intruder. So they're not like bad people, but you throw in this idea of an intruder, but why? Like, I don't know. I like, it just doesn't really work. I suppose. <laughs> notice how I notice how I completely bailed out on trying to explain why I <laughs> just like, Oh, I can't describe it. So I'm just going to say it doesn't work and just fucking and just leave it there and see if anybody notices. I feel like if you're going to talk about this intruder, I need to know more about that actual intruder. Don't don't hint at it and then never tell me anything about the intruder at all. Verse two, it almost acts like the drug addict is the intruder on the verse one girl. But then it just gets abandoned. And then it moves on to this, this immigrant. And then, and then the bridge, you know, there's someone here and it's not me. How could this be? I locked my doors, kept my armies on my shore, put rockets in the sky. Yeah, I don't know. It, that one, I, I, I guess I'm looking for a description of why this is an intruder and why is that a threat 
And why should it be an alert when it's not? Maybe I'm just missing the point. Maybe that's the whole point is that this is not an intruder. It's just another person suffering like anybody else. I don't know. Anyway, okay, let's move on. Track 11 is Streets on Fire featuring Matthew Santos. If it sounds like the fucking Imagine Dragons again, I don't have a problem with Imagine Dragons, but it's going to be very distracting. Produced by Kristen Drop. Here we go. Streets on Fire. Let's see how the vocals sound by Matthew. Some call it the vengeance. Some say it's an accident. Some say it's an entrance. The poor say uh. the rich have the cure. The rich say the poor are the source. Revolutionaries say a psychological war invented by the press just to have something to report. Let's go through this. This is kind of fascinating. I I almost don't want to because I feel like he's probably gonna answer this question in the following verse. But let's 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 dig into it just a little. Stars are aligned. Plants colliding. The plan is arriving, and she's out there smiling. And through this album, generally speaking, she has been the streets. Fear is upon us. Skies tried to warn us. Parents are goners. No children to mourn us. It's driving me crazy. This war is my lady. And the song Streets on Fire. We've lost all our babies. God is amazing. That's, that's, that's a fucking, that line right there. I mean, I feel like that's, it's so well inserted because it's like one of the things that kind of infuriates me is, how I don't I don't understand how people can have a belief like that when all of the awful things are happening. But anyway, I don't want to I don't want to turn to that too much. It's just something that it sticks out to me. The tick and the timer, the slip of the rhymer, the pimp and the riser. You cross her, you'll find her. Disease. The virus is spreading in all directions. No safe zone. No cure. No protection. No symptoms. No sign of infection. No vaccines. No corrections. So I, I, I have to assume that what he's discussing here, the disease is, is violence. Violence. Sickness. Some are still in doubt of its existence. Some call it forgiveness. Some call it the vengeance. And I think really it would be more specifically the circle of violence, the cycle, the cycle of violence. Some say it's an exit. Some an entrance. The poor say the rich have the cure. The rich say the poor are the source. Revolutionaries say it's psychological war invented by the press just to have something to report. Came from the first case, came from the circular. Science say it only affects the mind. I don't know. Let's keep going. Pretty fascinating lyrics. So let's drop into it. We'll let verse two play out. Death is on the tip of her tongue. And, and the chorus, the tip death on the tip of her tongue. Danger to her streets. fingers. So if it's her being the personification of the streets. Say the neon signs by the loudspeakers repeating that everything is fine. A subtle silence to demolish your troubled conscience of a compass with no knowledge and every freedom denied. Every dream is designed and broadcasted from the masses to the masses from the antennas on top of the shrines. Was fine and receiving planet during the panic and shorty. It reports back everything in your mind. Everything is lying, everything is done, everything is a rule, everything is a crime. Everything was here, then everything rewind. The new weather burn the feathers off everything's fine. 
she likes it, she loves it. The sadness, the madness, the bad shit, the lavish, the fastness, the clashes, the ashes, the ashes, everything intertwined. Death is on the tip of tongue and dangers at the tip of her finger and her streets. I really like this. The drums. The drums remind me of something else I've heard. I almost feel like I'm thinking of a beat off of uh, a song that we used in the original Matrix movie. I don't remember the name of the actual song, though. You know, I was trying to... The previous track, Intruder, kind of threw me off a bit. But if you look at the album, Run, Gold Watch, Hip Hop Save My Life, Intruder, Streets on Fire, especially Intruder Alert, Hip Hop Save My Life feels like it's a... a it's kind of the first divergence you get from street life. The first that real substantial, I'm trying to do this other thing. And then you get this intruder alert song, which kind of threw me for a loop. I wasn't honestly not too into that one. But then you have Streets on Fire. And it's almost like if intruder, intruder alert is the idea of having an intruder that you don't realize is there, because that's what's going on functionally in the song. Then you get this. It's almost like it's almost like waking up. Oh shit. Oh shit. Like seeing this thing that you at first you wanted, and you know this can apply to so many different things, right? Like I don't know, buying a car. It's it's nice to go buy a car, right? If you need a car, sometimes oh I'm I'm gonna go get a new car, right? Like you're all excited and this and that and that. <clears throat> but if you look at a new car and you, there's you can look at it. A, Totally different way if you want to. You can look at a new car as something neat and it's fun and it's new and I love it and blah, blah, blah. Or you can go, fuck. Now I've got these car payments. My insurance is high. Like there's pros and cons to every situation, right? But sometimes we get so infatuated with something, we only see the pros and we don't see the cons or we just don't want to see the cons. So I feel like with, with the album right now, we've, we're in this thing of we're realizing the character, the whatever you want to call it, is all of a sudden kind of seeing these things that was were once coveted as, oh shit, the streets are on fire. You know, this this is a false angel. My femme fatale, my darling fraudulent angel, once caught her changing the batteries in her halo, receipt for her wings and everything that she paid for, the address to the factory where they made those. Scientist said she's all inside my head. So this character who was once in love with the streets, my favorite, my darling, I take you everywhere, I love, you know, all that kind of shit. And now realizing, no, the streets are not what I think they are. The streets are not here to help me. Where was the line? There's the part where she likes it. She... Weather burned, the feathers, oh, here we go. Everything in your mind, everything is lying. Everything is dying. Everything is a rule. Everything is a crime. Everything was here, then everything rewind the new. Weather burned, the feathers off, everything flying. And she likes it and she loves it. The sadness, the madness, the bad shit, the lavish, the fastest, the clashes, the ashes, the ashes, everything intertwined. So finally seeing some of the, the cons to this whole thing. <clears throat> One thing it's tough with albums like this, man, like honestly thus far, I have to I, I would say I'm just a little, I, was, I thought it was going to be more of a cohesive story. So reading the Wikipedia thing and say, oh shit, it's only really across kind of like five tracks. There's more going on. Each, each song seems to have its own functional place. But so far, I'm enjoying it. I thought I would enjoy this a little more. But, but it's, it's a cool album thus far. But these last couple songs, it's kind of neat to see this turn. But it's very subtle. It's very, very subtle. It's one of those things where if you're not paying attention, if you just kind of listen to a couple songs... Like there's there's a couple, there's plenty of people in Discord who are like oh god this album fine get it done with get it out of the way so we don't have to you know hear it basically because they they're just not into it I feel like this is one of those albums where yeah if you like this song but you skip that one and you skip this one and I like this one and I skip that one if you do that and I can see why people would skip certain songs but if you do that you kind of lose this this functional process these each track doing its own specific thing. Because now the previous track makes a lot more sense, especially since it came after Hip Hop Saved My Life, which came after Gold Watch, which came after High Definition. I feel like 
in terms of a story, this album is constructed very well so far. Anyway. Ha. Huh. Okay, well, let's keep going. I'm kind of... You know, here I just said I'm, I, I hope I would enjoy this a little more than I have. And now I'm like, oh, let's keep going because I want to see. <laughs> I've like reinvigorated it again. All right. Track 12 is called Little Weapon featuring Nikki G and Bishop G produced by Ta Patrick Stump. Drop it in track 12, Little Weapon. Now Lil Terry got a gun he got from the store He bought it with the money he got from his chores He robbed the candy shop, told her lay down on the floor Put the cookies in the bag, take the pennies out the Put drawer the Look, Khalil got bag. a gun he got from the rebels To kill the infidels and American devils A bomb on his waist, a mask on his face Prays five times a day and listens to heavy metal Little Alex got a gun he took from his dad That he snuck in the school in his black book bag His black nail polish, black boots and black hat He gon' blow away the bully that just pushed his ass Pushed his ass, pushed his ass, pushed his ass, pushed his ass. Little weapon Interesting. Huh. I killed another man today. Shot him in his back as he ran away. Then I blew up his oh, wow. with a hand grenade. Cut his wife though, and she put her hands to pray. Just five more dogs, then we can get a soccer ball. That's what my commander say. How old? Well, I'm like 10, 11. Been fighting since I was like six or seven. Now I don't know much about wow. where I'm from, but I know I strike fear everywhere I come. Government want me dead, so I wear my gun. I really want the rocket launcher, but I'm still too young. Now here comes the march of the boy brigade. A macabre parade of the toys he made. And shamogs and shades who look off his age. About half the size of the flags they wave. And camouflage suits made to fit youths. Cause the ones off the dead soldiers hang a little loose. With AK 47s that they shooting in the heaven like they trying to kill a Jetson to struggle with little recruits. Cute, smileless, heartless, violent, childhood destroyed, devoid of all childish ways. Can't write their own names. Who will be? I like this track. This, own this graves. Think you gangster popped a few rounds. These kids will come through and murder a whole town. They sit back and smoke and watch it burn down. The grave gets deeper the further we go down. Ha ha. I like this one. I like this one as a song. I like the beat. I like this. So this this section right here that I have highlighted, I can't pronounce it, but on the annotation it says, um, this saying is an Islamic expression to ask Allah for forgiveness. And the reason, so I like the beat. I like this as a song on its own, but this little opening bit, you know, the, the kid robbing the gun store, the rebel to kill American infidels, you know, that the guy that's going to shoot the bully. <clears throat> it's almost like it. Well, I don't even know how to phrase this. I was going to say it was like the inverse of the cool. But it's it's really not. It's the ugliness of the cool. <clears throat> it, like earlier I was talking about the, the two sides of the coin, right? When you get so locked in your own idea and you believe this thing so much, whatever it is. And then the people who are your opposition, the opposite side of that coin, <clears throat> they're so far removed. And so it's easy to, to look down on them and want to hurt them or, or whatever. But this coming after the streets are on fire, it really, this, this song is removed as it is also fits in so well as another puzzle piece to this overall story of just different people pursuing their own ends and 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 being so ruthless in showing the ugliness the ugliness of their cool you know he shot another man today shot him in his back as he ran away blew up his hut with a hand grenade cut his wife's throat as she goes to pray just five more dogs and we can get a soccer ball. You know, I'm 10 or 11 fighting since I was six or seven. So, I mean, this is, how do I say this without fucking harping on something that you guys already know? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Kind of fascinating though. The Mac macabre parade of the toys he made. I, he looks half his age. Half the size of the flags they wave, camouflage suits made to fit use, because the ones off the dead soldiers hangs a little loose. Popped a few rounds, kids come around, murder a whole town, sit back and smoke, watch it burn down. The gray gives deeper the further they go down. Ha. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. My brain isn't 
isn't braining right now. <laughs> There's like five things I'm trying to like stick together and nothing's coalescing. Oh, next part, I insert code to sweeten up the little person's murder workload. I tell them he work both CIA with A. I operative, I operate this game all day. I hold a controller connected to the soldier with weapons on his shoulder. He's only seconds older than me. We play full but serious. Now keep that on mind for online experience. Uh. Oh, Ooh, hey, man, great production. I really like the production. Huh. This feels like an extension of of Streets on Fire in a in a sense. I I don't know. There was a line on Streets on Fire. Uh, here, revolutionaries say it's psychological war invented by the press just to have something to report. That line. I feel like Little Weapon is an extension of that idea. Especially this final verse, you know, playing violent video games. And it, there seems to be elements of like psychology pushed in this it'd be fascinating to hear Lupe, Lupe talk about this song what he was trying to go for with this song and I'm trying to tether it to the idea of the cool and I I think I think I'm on the right track there I think this is the ugliness that exists you know on the other side of the cool coin basically what people are willing to do to look cool but it's it's even beyond that because the word cool, like, I don't know how it is in the rest of the country, but for California, you know, it's just, yeah, cool, whatever, like, chill. That's, it's a different, the cool in this album is a very different meaning. It'd almost be like badass type thing. And, you know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know anything about being a revolutionary and, like, killing people and, and all this other crap. But, you know, the online gaming stuff, I think, is something that, probably a lot of us out there can relate to we've experienced that in some form or another and the shit people will say online to try and sound badass <laughs> right and and for what why you know that's really what's fascinating to me about all this is i like that lupe is exploring this this idea of the things that we do as people to try to impress others to look cool but then especially like with the online sphere you know doesn't even matter if you impress anyone at all because at the same exact time you also have no respect for their opinion at all so why are we trying to impress someone we don't have respect for why are we trying to look cool in front of these people that don't care about us that don't know us you know you can you get into some of the, the the other verses, the earlier verses in this track. And really, I mean, clearly these kids, and this is the hypothetical, but this is also true. I mean, there are, there's all kinds of instances of like child soldiers and stuff. And they're just being used like pawns. And they, you know, they get manipulated and they get told certain things and God knows what, right? I, I can't talk on that. I'm not a fucking expert, but you, you know, you can look that shit up. It's there. And it's just... Our own desires can make us our own pawns, you know, like that's that's the tricky thing about just our own selves is especially the ego and, and, and wanting to be whatever. Essentially, it really just gets down to that desire. It's, as soon as somebody figures out what it is that we want, if they can figure out a way to feed it to us slowly, I, then you're just ripe for manipulation just ripe oh i'm finally whatever this thing i've been needing i've been craving i want it in my life so much if you come across somebody with ill intent with malicious intent and they figure out that little code that that is the secrets to your desire and they figure out how to feed that to you slowly oh god be careful be very 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 careful because you will just get wrapped around somebody's fingers so fast in that kind of scenario. So I'll <clears throat> the cure to that is figuring out what the fuck is it that you actually want. And that's a hard one because sometimes we think we know what we want, but usually the real answer is like four layers deeper. 
you know, we want to be this, that, and the other. And it's like, actually, no. <laughs> it's actually this other thing that goes way back into your childhood or into some horrible relationship or something. You know, there's this broken piece at the core of us. What was I saying at the beginning about how nobody wants to figure out their own shit, right? We want to, we want to point out the shit of everybody else, everybody else, what they're doing wrong, how they're all fucked up and broken. We don't want to spend time on ourselves. <laughs> We're right back there again. We're right back there. And then it's a cycle too. It is a cycle. You know, streets on fire, touched on that a little bit. Hell, even Intruder Alert touched on it a little bit. <clears throat> it really is fascinating. We as creatures are just so strange. So strange. Okay, let's keep going. Really getting like caught up on my own like philosophical stew here <laughs> and I'm trying to keep it somewhat contained because I feel like I'll just ramble and ramble and ramble which some people have said no Bob ramble that's why we're here and I, I get that I appreciate that but at the same time it, none of these are like like thought out trains of thought so it's I'll just ramble and I'll just end up in the middle of nowhere with no point no reason <laughs> don't even know what the fuck I was talking about so it's, it's good to try to keep things on the rails. Track 13 is called Gotta Eat. Produced by Soundtrack, which might be God, another piece to this whole like philosophical puzzle, right? All right, let's jump in. Track 13, Gotta Eat. The production on this album is I'm very surprising. I'm going to kill him. So make niggas suffer. You know what I'm saying? Man said life ain't easy. When niggas gotta eat, that's when shit get greasy. Streets wow. be all like feed me, feed me. When niggas gotta eat, that's when shit get greasy. My man said life ain't easy. When niggas what? gotta eat, that's what? when shit get greasy. Streets be all like Whoa. feed me, feed me. When niggas gotta eat, that's when shit get greasy. My man said life ain't easy. When niggas wow. gotta eat, that's when shit get greasy. Hey, he had a Very whole different. lot of cheese. Very different Plus production. it was the Mac, had a whole I don't lot know of cheese. Made a lot of niggas fat, gave a whole lot of G's. Grams, man, he had a whole lot of these. And he would let you hold like a whole lot of keys. Even if you lose some, he would give you new ones. Twice the bread. I like this like sound right here. Buns. This is cool. And he had a whole lot of seeds. So greedy, never gave to the needy. That's what some say. The way he shunned all the bums hanging in the subways. He called them fruits and laugh at him. Delivery man on the pickup drive through and throw a bag at him. And it was hard to understand him sometimes. Making the killing the way he had him standing in line. Like, my man said, like. This song feels like the justification for Little Weapon and Streets on Fire. This is cool. Like, this is cool. I, I am enjoying this quite a bit. I, I feel I almost want to like go back in time and, and unsay what I said or apologize a little bit or something. Like, it, it's hard to get at first, but as I spend more, as we keep moving through the album, song by song, it, it, he is painting a pretty cool, fascinating picture. And this, this, I mean, this is justification, right? I gotta eat, gotta eat. It's so all, all the things that are happening. Well, not necessarily specifically this song, but like this is the, the piece of justification in the album. Let's finish it up and then we'll go through the lyrics. Cause, but this is kind of cool, man. The production is really, I like it. I, I like that it's unique and it's different. I haven't heard anything like it. The real question is, do I like it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I enjoy it. I don't hate it. I enjoy it, but I don't really know how I feel about it. This, this album's gonna take more listens for sure to really settle in on an opinion. Easy. When niggas gotta eat, that's when shit get greasy. Streets be all like, feed me, feed me. When niggas gotta eat, I really like this sound right here. This is cool. That's cool. That's cool. Haters call him king. Haters call him clown. He would say, bite me. That's the way it's going down. He was having thoughts that maybe he should retire. Went to church on a Sunday and saw a deep fry. Said he had beef and people want him dead. He loved the hungry ones, was only scared of the feds. He lived a fast life, couldn't get his path right. Fry just told him about the hooters that he had last night. Turn yourself in to the paddy wagon. Said no, bacon wouldn't take him. Had the pigs on the payroll. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. This 
said life ain't easy. Uh -huh. When niggas gotta eat, that's when shit get greasy. Hey. Dun, 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 dun. I'm kind of just now picking up on that little piano note element right there. I kind of like this verse, this final verse. You know, lovers call him king, haters call him clown, of course, right? He would say, bite me, that's the way it's going down. He was having thoughts that maybe he should retire. I went to church on Sunday and he saw a deep friar, which is a play. <laughs> so a friar is like another word for priest or whatever, but a deep friar, obviously, for cooking. Said he had beef and people want him dead. He loved the hungry ones, was only scared of the feds, lived the fast life, couldn't get his path right. Couldn't, could not, could not, not, would not, but could not. Those are different. And with somebody like Lupe Fiasco, sometimes these little semantics matter a lot. Could not get his life, his path right. Not would not. Friar told him just, Friar just told him about the hooters that he had last night. Turn yourself into the patty one and said, no, Bacon wouldn't take him because Pigs was on the payroll. So he can't, he can't get arrested. <laughs> Gotta eat. Gotta eat. He was a heartbreaker, a law shaker. If it was about cake and he was partaker. International would take trips, bon voyage. That's how he, how hard he was fishing for the chips. So fish and chips, that's what they, you know, bon voyage, this is French, fish and chips. So if you're out in Europe, fish and chips is a food. But what's chips the metaphor for of? Money, okay, yeah, sure. So greedy, never gave to the needy. That's what some say. The way he shunned all the bums, hanging on the subway, called them fruit, laughed at him to Yeah, you know, earlier I was saying this is justification, but I don't, I don't, I might be wrong on that. I don't, this doesn't necessarily, it sounds like self-justification, which is different from a reason. You know, like right now with all this bullshit in the Middle East, you know, there's retaliatory attacks and all this other crap. And the reason, of course, is because it's a response to this and that's kind of their own justification. But like this is more, this isn't cause and effect type of a thing. Got, gotta eat isn't like this thing happened and therefore I must do this. No, this is just internal. This is internalized justification. This is almost like a greed type thing. And he couldn't stop. Couldn't stop. Streets be all like, feed me, feed me. He had a whole lot of cheese. Plus he was a Mac, some Mac and cheese. Had a whole lot of steez. Made a lot of people fat, gave a whole lot of G's. Grand's man, he had a whole lot of these. So he doesn't need more. He's, he's not trying to eat. He has plenty. It's in abundance. This is, this is greed, essentially. But it's greed disguised as justification to the self, I think. That's my take on it. It's fun. <laughs> this is really fun. Let's move on to track 14, which is called Dumb It Down, which I feel is directed to me personally. <laughs> please, please, Lupe, make it simple for poor old Bob so he can understand what the fuck's going on. As featuring Gemstones and Grand Burris, produced by Soundtrack, let's drop in track 14. Dub it down. I'm really starting to enjoy the, the uniqueness of the production. Very different. I'm fearless, now hear this, I'm earless, and I'm peerless, that means I'm eyeless, which means I'm tearless, which means my iris resides where my ears is, which means I'm blinded, but I'ma find it, I can feel its nearness, but I'm a veer so I don't come near, like a chicken or a deer. But I remember I'm not a listener or a seer, so my windshield smear. Here you steer, I really shouldn't be behind this. Clearly, cause my blindness, the windshield is menstrual. The whole grill is roadkill, so trilling, so sincere. Yeah, I'm both them there. This motherfucker wrote a song and called it Dumb It Down. And then put the most complicated goddamn shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this is an insult. I'm attacked. I'm being attacked right now. This is bullshit. How the fuck am I supposed to figure this out? Well, let's go. Let's keep going. God damn it, Lupe. You son of a bitch. <laughs> you going over niggas' heads. Right? Yeah, they're going over they my head. Me they don't feel you. Hey, we ain't graduate from school, nigga. Hey, the big words ain't cool, nigga. <laughs> the big words ain't cool. Yeah, I heard me and bitches, nigga. Hey, make a song for the bitches, nigga. Hey, we don't care about the weather, nigga. Hey, you'll sell more records. You'll sell more records. And I'm mouthless. 
dreams I'm soundless Now as far as the hearing I found it It was as far as the distance from an earring to the ground is But the door knockers on the ear of a stewardess in a leer She fine and she flying, I feel I'm flying by Cause my mind's on cloud nine and in the mind at the same time You done shedding too much light, Lou <laughs> You're making them wanna do right, Lou <laughs> They're getting self-esteem, Lou getting self -esteem. These girls are trying to be queens, Lou <laughs> They're trying to graduate from school, Lou <laughs> They're starting to think that smart is cool, Lou <laughs> They're trying to get about the hood, Lou <laughs> I'll tell you what you should do <laughs> I saw this thing recently. I I'm not saying this is true. I'm not saying I believe it. I'm not saying it's fake. I don't know. I don't know. I just saw this thing. That's it. And it was some clip about how supposedly hip hop is the CIA psyop to entrap the young black youth into systems of violence and patterns of violence and blah 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 blah. And there was this clip with Ice Cube on there talking about how all producers like. Oh, no, 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 don't say this, say that. This shit's fire. This shit's, this is the cool shit. Again, I'm not saying it's true. I'm not saying I believe it. I'm not saying anything about anything. I'm just saying I saw that, and, you know, and you've got this hook from Graham. You've been shedding too much light. You're making them want to do right. They're getting self-esteem. Girls are trying to be queens, trying to graduate from school, starting to think that smart is cool, trying to get up out of the hood, tell you what you should do, dumb it down. It would be fascinating to know. Like, I wish I had a magic wand that was the truth. What is the actual truth? Because in my experience, I, from what I've seen, usually it's kind of a blend of all things. You know, we love to say, oh, this is the reason, and oh, that's the reason, and, and whatever. But usually it's kind of a little from everywhere. That's just all life is, right? Just, just ripples from all these different directions colliding in the same spot to make a wave, make something happen. I mean, there's influence all over the place. Anyway, that just popped in my mind because that, that was recent uh, and it seemed applicable to the hook. And I ain't use my headrest yet. They said they need proof like a vest less chest. This about the best fair FF jet in the nest. <laughs> I have no idea. Confidence and excess depth. Even Scuba Steve will find it hard to breathe around these leagues. My snorkel is a tuba, looter, ruler around these seas. West side beside him, west side beside him. Chest high and rising, almost touching the knees. Go ahead and me to sleep, nigga. That's why you ain't popping in the streets, nigga. You ain't winning no awards, nigga. Robots and skateboards, nigga. GQ man of the year, G. Shit ain't rocking over here, B. These are great hugs. talk about your cars, nigga. And what the fuck is go yard, nigga? G. They told me I should come down, cousin, but I flatly refuse. I ain't dumb down. No. You know what that track makes me think of? It's like, what would this be? This, you know, we all know, well, I'm assuming we all know, but I know and well love the, uh, the track, Scared the Hose, right? <laughs> this feels like this track is more of like a, a Scaring the gangsters or some shit like that. Like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. What is this shit? How come you're not popping on the streets? Why are you talking about robots and shit? <laughs> uh, robots and skateboards. Like, all right, let's let's try and see how how stupid am I really? Let's let's go go to verse one. I'm fearless. Now hear this. I'm earless. Okay, and I'm peerless. That means I'm. Eyeless, okay, yeah, because you peer with your eyes, you look around. So he doesn't have any peers, he doesn't have anybody a contemporary that's with him, but he also has no eyes because he can't peer, which means I'm tearless, yeah, okay, which means my iris. And I feel like there's a wordplay that I'm missing. The iris is, you know, in your eye. Resides where my ear is, which means I'm blinded, but I'm going to find it. I can feel its nearness. But I'm a virus, so I don't come near Yeah, he already lost me. Here, yeah, no. <laughs> this fucking guy <laughs> Dumb it. what sucks is like it would be fun to like go you know go toe to toe with the lyrics like no this guy's no he's way over my head although I like this part right here let's see here took both pills when the bloke in the trench coat and the lokes in the chair had approached him here made it clear as a ghost or a biter of the throats in the mirror the writer of the quotes for the ghosts who's supplier of the notes to the living, riveting his rosy, 
pocket full of posies given to the mother of the deceased. I feel like this is a, a, a jab at like ghost riders or something. Yeah, okay. So there, that ghost riding there, sure, sure. Clear as a ghost or a biter, somebody who steals lyrics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clear as a ghost in the mirror. Oh, right. So there's a picture of a vampire on that one. Vampires have no reflection. So it's clear as a ghost in a mirror. Biter of the throats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> You're going over people's heads, Lou. Dumb it down. <laughs> oh. And I'm mouthless, which means I'm soundless. Now, as far as the hearing, I found it. It was as far as the distance. What does this annotation say? Lou told his father he was earless. He's now recovering his hearing. The found ears seem to represent fans that listen despite his refusal of commercial output. Okay. 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 It was as far as the distance from the earring to the ground is. But the knock, door knockers on the ear. Jesus Christ, dude. Like, I can feel my brain just go. Like, just grind to a halt. <laughs> Fucking Lupe. <laughs> what an asshole. What an asshole. Making me feel stupid, even though I really am stupid. But now he's making me do it in public. <clears throat> he did that shit on purpose. On purpose. Track 15 is called Hello Goodbye. Uncool. Mm. Mm. Some diversion here. Uh, it's featuring Uncle, produced by Chris Ross, Uncle and, or Chris Gross, I'm sorry, and Lupe. Let's drop in track 15. Hello Goodbye. Uncool. Really starting to just, it's taken a while. I'm really starting to settle into this album and the sound. Just very unique production. Huh. Oh, wow. Wow. Banging it with the drum. together the weather is better than ever i hope it never ends i hope it lasts forever but when it does we can all pretend that it's better than it's ever been lie to ourselves like the skies will rebel and it's well and it's fine and it's fine if they fell and you can find the storyline if you survive to retell and then he just sits and waits for them to kick in the door he was once a hero they don't love him no more and keep in mind of, I'm, I'm keeping this angle of the streets. So the streets turning on this person. That's what, that's my angle. I don't know if that's right or not. There's a blast every time a 10 hits the floor. His gift for not fighting another man's war. If they get their hands on the mask that he wore on his face and can put somebody else in his place to restore the state, the illusion that it's safe. The faith that being a slave is so great. Gas, as gas fills the room and rockets destroy everything around him, he stands to find himself surrounded by thousands of souls that he once trained to never miss their targets, heartless. So yeah, he's become uncool. And when you do that, everybody who thought you were cool, they turn on you immediately, right? So this is definitely a metaphor for that. But there's some, <laughs> there's some pretty powerful lines in here. The faith that being a slave is so great. Restore the state, the illusion that it's safe. There's a lot of truth in that too, isn't there? As much as 
as much as we as a as a, as creatures as a species really like to talk about how much we care about the truth we also have a lot of love for the illusion as well we want to believe the illusion and i think it's just because it would be nice if the illusion were true it would be nice if it were true let's keep going kind of a fascinating track fucking banging around on the drums You know what I kind of like about that too is <clears throat> I feel like first of all I feel like the beat is like destruction re represents destruction the you're falling into the oblivion into the darkness but what's also neat is hello sunshine <clears throat> and it's almost like in becoming uncool you start to see the light of of the ugliness of what it means to be cool. You get these verses in here, you know, to restore the state, the illusion that it's safe, the faith that being a slave is so great and everything's being destroyed around him. It's being deemed uncool, it's being fully rejected now. But in that, you're also kind of seeing the light in a sense. And I want to be, I should be careful here because I don't want to make it sound like, uh, it's very easy to just wander off into being a total snob. Like, I'm so right and everybody else is so stupid and blah, 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 blah. But more so, uh, I think toxicity, I suppose, would probably be the best word to go, go for. Of, or maybe not even that. Not even that. Maybe it's less, less toxicity and more of a realization of what you actually care about. Because how often do we as people do things or go along with things or agree with or buy or wear, whatever, because that's what's cool and that's how you got to fit in. And you're, and you're, it's almost like we'll spend more time and effort in something that we don't really care for because that's the accepted thing rather than just pursuing what we love, rather than just doing the thing that we actually actually care about. And, and this applies anywhere. This, this isn't like a, a hip hop thing. This isn't a community thing. This is, this is just anything, anything that you care about. But how many times have you like hid it from your friends or you didn't tell anybody, you didn't want to talk about it. You didn't, you didn't buy that thing that you actually really liked because you knew you couldn't show it to anybody because if you did, you'd get picked on or made fun of or, or whatever, right? I mean, this, this across, goes across everything you could do this you could apply this to religious ideas political ideas anything sports anything and so in this context hello sunshine like if you're surrounded by a group of people who make you feel that way maybe they just make you feel a little boxed in you don't get to be who you actually are but then something happens where they all turn on you and now you're you're thrown out of the group you know these are all fancy words, right? You're exiled from the group, right? The friendships break down, whatever. And then you're kind of out on your own. Yes, hello darkness, hello oblivion, it's, your, it's over. But then a hello sunshine. Now you can just be who you are. And that's a nice silver lining, you know? I, I have a, a, a family member who, her and her husband and, um, you know, they went through a bunch of shit a couple years ago because they basically found out that their friends weren't really their friends. 
and I don't, I won't get into any detail, but that was, you know, that was a tough year for them of just finding out that their friends were really just acquaintances who happened to do the same activities. And because they knew each other, they would go do things together, but they just came to find out these people, they didn't fucking care about them at all. They didn't care. They were more just interested in gossip and things like that. And so they had to go through this change of essentially cutting out who they thought were their friends and kind of starting over with establishing friendships and stuff. But now they're much better. They're much happier, which is good. Ah, this is fun, man. This is fun. This is fun. Definitely uncool. I love that phrase. I love that final, final line, especially with this music just banging around. Cause I feel like there's plenty of hip hop heads out there who would probably hate this production and say, it's so uncool. What the fuck is this garbage, right? <laughs> I don't want to hear that weird shit no more. What the fuck is this? Give me back my ox cord. <laughs> Scaring the gangsters. <laughs> but I love it from Lupe's perspective because what he, what's he doing? He's just making the music he wants to make. That's the most important part. You got to make what you want to make. You can't make it for other people. You got to make it for yourself. And if it fails, it fails. But if for you, it was a victory, then that's what you got to go for. But of course, that's not always true. You know, some people want money. Okay, then sell out <laughs> and make what everybody wants you to make. Hmm. Cause she, all right, let's keep going. I'm just kind of like fucking rambling all over the place right now. Track 16 is called The Die. Huh. Okay. Oh, I wonder if this is going to be the skeleton with the dice in his head and the crack smoke coming out of his mouth. Maybe. It's featuring Gemstones, produced by Soundtrack. Track 16, The Die. Oh, guitar. Oh, that, he's had a lot of guitar. The death of the cool. The death of the cool. Well, I heard like cows that all your enemies want to shoot you down. They got AK-47s and a bunch of Mac 11s and the automatic weapons that produce the pals. Word on the street is they all got heaters. They gon' hit you up, you ain't even gon' see it. You got a lot of money, I ain't trying to be funny, but they say where you're going, you ain't even gon' need it. They see you round, round, shining with your fine round diamonds, pretty green, I laid it. Been on the sideline, popping while you prime time, popping hungry niggas want a piece of your pastry. I suggest you protect your bakery, cause they coming for your head. And it's a bounty on that chain that's hanging from your neck, you see. I know. Somebody's gotta die. Hit a nigga with the mini max strap, clap any nigga think he getting G's down here. Any nigga, any nigga getting money, I'm a honey man. I heard Michael Young is the re clown in. Don't pay them niggas no mind, they hating on you. Ain't nobody with a shot, they are planning to do a robber itching to catch your body creeping in the stolen jalopy out there waiting on you. Sit me, so I'm confident about this nigga. Then I let the mini max with a shotgun hit him. I've been waiting all day trying to spot this nigga. I can't let him get away, I'm a pot this nigga. They don't know about the chopper in the trunk, the Glock's in the box and the nine on tour, the bulletproof glass, the forty in the stash, you pull a steering wheel and it pop. Forty caliber stashed up in the stash box, bulletproof windows you couldn't break 'em with a padlock. Act in the trunk with a sounds bump, two twin Glock forties and a nine in the trunk. He's going so fucking fast. Finna go up in this club, show a little love, get a few drinks, holler at some girls, snatch up a pair, leave out of there, put some dro in the air, then go and get some girls. What is the song they're talking about? Oh, the the hook of the coolest. Okay. I run these motherfucking streets, niggas out here looking for me. <laughs> like I wish a motherfucker would. Hey, nigga, hurry your ass up, nigga. Hey. What's up now, nigga? Ain't too cool now, nah, easy, nigga. <clears throat> Something else I want to touch on with becoming uncool and breaking out of these groups. I, I spoke on it a little earlier, right? I'm just going to assume if you're here, you heard that part from five minutes ago. I won't rehash it. But <clears throat> you see this in a lot of very tight knit, closed circles. You know, I reference cults a lot. I, I call it cult like thinking. But something with becoming uncool, you know, th I feel like this track, The Die, you know, we're going to go out and kill now the uncool. We got to kill the uncool. And why is that? It's because sometimes there's this violent like backlash. I shouldn't say violent. That's that that means something specific. Just in general, backlash. Sometimes there's a backlash when you reject the group. It can it can go both ways. Where maybe you take this thing that you like and you enjoy and you care about it and you kind of hide it because you're trying to fit in. You you want to be 
in this community, whatever that community is. But maybe they do something that you don't like, and so you, maybe you don't necessarily participate or, or whatever, right? And so you're kind of, you know, maybe you're a little uncool, you're flirting with uncool. If you take that and you push that, if you reject like one of the main structures of that community, one of the ideologies, usually there's backlash. Because it's one thing to be uncool and not quite fit in. It's another thing entirely to rise up with your own confidence in the things that you do care about and say no to the thing that they do care about. Say, no. You think I'm uncool. Actually, you're uncool. You're the ones who are wrong. People don't like that. People don't like that. Communities don't like that. Usually it doesn't go well. Usually you get ousted immediately, exiled, you know, whatever you want to call it. Well, you know, all the fancy terms. I like exile. That's a great one. The reason why is because I love uh, <laughs> Nacho Libre. <laughs> when he's ex exiles himself from the village and he's just up on the hill. <laughs> ah, shit, that's hilarious. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, just think about, you don't even have to be in that situation to think about people. I, we all have people in our lives who have certain beliefs, have certain principles, have whatever, and if you told them, no, that is wrong, they will fucking lose their mind because they can't handle it. They just can't handle the rejection of what they think is cool. So it goes, goes all these different directions. Anyway, there you go. I wanted to touch on that. Is there a why? I think mostly because I, I think it's important. Like I think people, they worry about maybe being excluded or being isolated and, or, you know, being alone. That's a big, problem right now for what I've, I've seen. There's just like this loneliness epidemic. <clears throat> and I'm trying to instill the idea there can be a silver lining in being alone in that you are free to be who you are and you're free to pursue what you want because there's no one else. I mean, it kind of sounds shitty, but there's no one else to tell you no. There's no one to tell you, oh, that's dumb. That's stupid. Don't do that. If you're alone, if you're lonely, then fucking do whatever you want. This is, it's kind of like a golden opportunity. I know that sounds, it probably sounds dumb because I'm sure people who are lonely are also probably pretty sad and don't really necessarily have a lot of passion towards certain things, I'm assuming. But sometimes, man, sometimes there's just some freedom and when you break away and it's just you, and like, fuck, I can, I can kind of do anything I want. There's, there's some freedom in that. That's not an opportunity that comes up very often. It's kind of odd and how it presents itself. Because usually it's presented in a not great way. Usually it comes off as a negative. But man, you can if you can take that thing and spin it around, it can become a pretty strong positive. Anyway, let's move on. There's three more songs. <laughs> I feel like I'm just talking out my ass today. <laughs> Track 17 is called Put You On Game. Okay, so here's, maybe this is the game character. Anyway, the story that I thought was going to happen has not been as uh, prominent as, I, as it, I, I hoped it would be. Uh, the die I like, that gets a heart. Track 17, put you on the game, or put you on game, produced by Simon Says. Here we go. Trippy. Let me put you on game. Oh, trippy. Cool sound. Very dark. Ominous. Don't you know that I run this place and I've begun this race? Must I rerun this pace? I'm the reason it's become this way. And their love for it is the reason I have become this praise. They love my darkness. I've made them heartless. And in return, they have become my martyrs. I've been in the poem of many a poet and That's I reside cool in the art beat. of many a artist. Some of your smarts like have tried to articulate my whole partnerness, but they're fruitless in their harvest. The drill grows from my footsteps. I'm the one that they follow. I am the one that they march with. Through the back alleys and the black markets, the oval offices, the crack houses and apartments. Through the mazes of the queens, the pages of the sages and the chambers of the kings. 
through the veins of the fiends. A paper chases pages, yo, I'm famous on the scene. This is a cool beat. This most ancientest thing speak every single language on the planet, yeah. I mean. You can watch on TV how they should properly depict you. The river should flow with liquor. Wow. Put your thirst on my elixirs. I am the safe haven for the rebel runaway and the resistor. The trusted misleader, the number one defender. And from a throne of their bones, I rule. These fools are my fuel, so I make them cool. Baptize them in the water out of Scarface pool. And feed them from the table that held the Corleone's food. If you die, tell them that you play my game. I hope your bullet holes become mouths that say my name. Cause I'm the... Damn, that's always fucking cool. That's probably my favorite one. <laughs> the beat, fucking great. I like that he slowed down a little bit. Uh, the die, they were going so fucking fast. It's like, bro, pump the brakes. I can't keep up. I love that darker tone on the production. That was really fucking good. Maybe you can grow up and be a stripper, a well self receiving prostitute, and gold digger. You can watch on TV how they should properly depict you. The river shall flow with liquor, quench your thirst of my elixirs. I am the safe haven for the rebel runaway and the resistor, the trusted misleader, the number one defender, and from the throne of their bones I rule. These fools are my fuel, so I make them cool. Lupe is really going after it. Like, I'm pretty fucking impressed by how little he's held back in his opinion on this. He's got some, honestly, like harsh fucking words in here. Do you know I run this place? Huh. Good fucking track. Like, I want to go line by line, but I don't want to spend like 10 minutes doing that just because... I, 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 I personally don't like it if I spend too long doing certain things. So that's that's one of the. It's not like a, a nervousness. That's just that's. I don't want to. I don't want to make a video where I'm just sitting here reading lyrics because I feel like that's kind of dumb. <laughs> Even though I do that a lot, I know I, I do try and uh, keep it limited. I'm the one that they follow. I'm the one that they march with through the back alleys and the black markets, the Oval offices. Crack houses and apartments. I, it's just really interesting that he throws the Oval Office in there. Through the mazes of the queens, the pages of the sages and the chamber queen kings. Hmm. I am the American dream, the rape of Africa, the undying machine, the overpriced medicine, murderous regime. He's fucking going at it. Like, no holding back at all on this one. I'm glad your daddy's gone, baby. Hope he never comes back. I hope he's with your mother, with my hustlers high in my traps. I hope you die in his trash. I can't help it. All I hear when you're crying is laughs. I'm sure somebody would find you tied up in this bag behind the hospital, little baby crack addict's hat. Fucking hardcore. But what was great is, I mean, these are pretty harsh lyrics. <clears throat> and it's delivered with such ease such comfort over this very dark, sinister beat. That's a great track. I think that's my favorite one off the album right there. Great in how dark it is. Not like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is my jam. <laughs> no, 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 not like that, but just incredible. Like very powerful. Two songs left. I kind of sit so my chair ain't so squeaky. Sorry if I do that too much. Track 18 is called Fighters, featuring that guy from <laughs> Imagine Dragons, although I don't think that it is. <laughs> Here we go, track 18, Fighters. Put you on game was fucking incredible. When the fighters are all around, God, it sounds the like Imagine Dragons. Are so on the ground. No one will save you anymore. What's happening? What you rapping about? It's a boy. Is it cars? Is it girls? Is it my night? The world? Or is it something they could never believe? 
Or is it something you could never achieve? Is it beyond your means? Is it inside your dreams? Can it never come out? Cause it's scared to, I'm prepared to, to worry about the words of the people it's weird to. You don't want them to hear you. You just wish it was a door that would appear that you can go disappear through. Well, I'm feeling your pain. I was feeling the same, but I said I'd never feel that again. There's one more for Let's finish it and then I'll, I'll ramble a bit. But I, I love that he's saying this. Is it cars? Is it girls? Is it my life? The world? I hope that God forgive us. All of us sinners turn us back into beginners. Put us up where the winners go. Holy apartments in the gardens in which the rivers flow. Thank you for all your blessings and all of your miracles. I thank all my fans and all my supporters. Shout out to Bishop G. Congrats on your new baby daughter. I tip my hat to all my family and friends. Now we just got one more to go. L U P N. When the fires are all around. All the lovers are on the ground No one will save you anymore So what's happening? What you rapping about, little boy? Is it cars? Is it girls? Is it my life? The huh. world? I like this one. Was that supposed to be the end of the album? Because there's one more song. <clears throat> when I was searching up, there's like an extra track. I don't know. Anyway, there's one more song. I, I'm gonna, I will consider the idea that maybe that was the end of the original album and maybe they added something. Maybe not. Who knows? <clears throat> I love that he made this because I've been ranting and raving and rambling and all this bullshit. You know, I forgot in the, in the uh, Wikipedia thing, it did talk about his dad died while he was making this album, which is fucking sad. You know, is it something they can never believe or never achieve? Is it beyond your means? Is it inside your dreams? Cause it can it never come out because it's scared to unprepared to too worried about the words of the people it's weird to right there that's the shit i've been rambling about for the last three hours <laughs> you know you don't want them to hear you you just wish there was a door that would appear that you can go disappear through well i'm feeling your pain i was feeling the same but I said I'd never feel that again. So all the shit I've been saying, I want anybody who's listening, anybody who is connecting with that to know Lupe Fiasco feels or did feel how you feel. And I think it's incredibly important, incredibly powerful to understand you are not alone when you feel the things that you feel. There's nothing wrong with being scared. There's nothing wrong with feeling unprepared or being worried about what people will think. These are all natural, normal feelings. You're not weak for feeling them. You're not a bad person for feeling them. It happens. It's real. But at the same time, they won't go away. You know, you can hide. You can hide, hide, hide. That's fine. You can totally choose to do that and nothing will happen because of it. You have to pursue what you want to pursue. And sometimes, yes, it means you are exposed and it means your vulnerable sides are out in the open. And yes, people can say some awful things and yes, it probably will hurt. But what's, what's is worse? You know, pursuing what you actually care about, pursuing and discovering who you really are or just making some other people less uncomfortable, a little happy, not disappointed, you know, there's so many ways this applies. Relationships with family members, with friends. I mean, job prospects. I mean, it's just everything. This is life right here, right here. This is life right here. Is it beyond your means, inside your dreams? Can it never come out because it's scared to, unprepared to, too worried? You just got to let it go, friends. You got to let it go somehow, some way. Maybe some people, you know, some people, they got balls, man. They just go, fuck it. I'm done. <laughs> right. And they just go do their thing. It doesn't happen very often, but you got to do baby steps too. You know, baby steps are fine. Baby steps are fine. Every now and then I think about the people who, you know, they want to lose weight. They want to get in shape and they go to the gym. 
and they go to the gym and they're the big fat slob, right? Who can't do anything and is out of shape and weak and blah, blah, right? And how do they feel? They feel like, oh my God, everyone's looking at me. Oh my God, look at everybody else. They're all in shape. They can do, oh. Anytime I see somebody who's out of shape at the gym, I think good for you, good for you. Go, go, push, do it. Get, get out of that shell, get out of that prison. Good, you're here, good, keep going. Don't stop. I haven't been at a gym in a long time. I've got my own like little weight set. But anytime I saw somebody, I was like, fucking keep going, man. Keep going. There was a <clears throat> there was a ski trip we went on last year. And when you go skiing, snowboarding, you don't see overweight people. <laughs> you just dump. But there was one girl I saw. She was pretty big. She was working and she was struggling. And, but I was like, fucking keep going. God, keep going. Because you could tell it was taking a lot out of her. But she was trying. She was fucking trying. Good shit. Good shit. Makes me emotional because I just want people to do it. Just do it, man. Just do it. Fuck what everybody thinks. Don't fucking worry. I mean, the people that laugh at you or the people that might talk down to you, they're assholes anyway. So don't worry about what they think. They're fucking assholes. Anyway, final try. Go, baby. Oh, oh, it's like prophetic. <laughs> go, baby. Hopefully, maybe he's going to say everything I just got done saying. That would be fucking amazing. Track 19, go, baby. He's got gemstones produced by soundtrack. Here we go. If he just, if he says in song form what I just got done, that'd be fucking amazing. Probably not. Where are my ladies at? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> where my ladies at? I said, where my ladies at? Let's find somewhere we can go crazy at. And for you, baby, I'll be a maniac. Hey, 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 hey. You don't have to worry about nothing. Cause every time I see you, baby, you'll be rolling with me. Uh, oh, I'll be on the sidelines, room for my dime, holding up my sign. And it says, <laughs> go, baby. Go, baby. Uh, go, baby. Very cool. Me, me, she loves me more, more, a more me, she assures, she adores me, even when it's up and down like seesaw, surely we can stop from scratch like default, uh, when they say you're not my baby like Maury, uh -huh. you can tell them that they're telling a story, uh -huh. testify like you're telling a jury, and I'll repeat it like you said it before me, we undefeated like a veteran army, and we as heavy as an elephant aren't we, let's take them to the zoo or better yet a safari, go baby, 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 go baby. So I want to pause real quick. This you, this is Lupe Fiasco saying this to you. The song is written like a relationship and you know supporting the other. No, he's supporting you right now, right now. That's what this song is. He just got done saying in the previous track. I'm feeling your pain. I was feeling the same. Now he's telling you go. Go baby, 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 go baby. You're my super superstar, super shot, fire, crack, strap, against fantastic super size, extra cheese. Let's believe. You're my super superstar, super shot, fire, crack, strap, against fantastic super size, extra cheese. Yes indeed. Go baby. Go baby, go baby, go baby, go baby, go baby, go baby. I want to like cry, not because I'm a, well, I mean emotionally, but yes, but like, because this is so great. This is so great. You know what I really love about this is Lupe's written this whole album and his writing style, right? He's got all these double meanings and these puzzles and riddles and shit to solve and it's fucking hard to understand and it's confusing. And then he comes out at the end and literally says, I was feeling the same way you are. I'm feeling you. And then he says, go, 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 go. Oh, it's fucking brilliant. I do want to cry, but like happy, happy cry. Like this is fucking, it's, like, so inspirational. So inspirational. Fuck being cool. <laughs> There's nothing in it. I mean, it's kind of fun, sure, maybe a little, but... 
don't you, wouldn't you rather just be you <laughs> instead? <laughs> right? I mean, I know that sounds dumb because I'm just saying, uh, if you be you, you won't be cool. But fuck being cool. Fuck being cool. What a waste of time. For what? I mean, yeah, I, <sighs> especially the people who are like really cool, right? The famous ones. All this, and these, how many times do we have to watch somebody who's famous temporarily just disappear? And nobody fucking cares, right? It's so temporary. It's so temporary. Huh. Wow. Well, you know, initially, I kind of had a hard first start, first half. I, like, it, it took me a while to like, really get what was going on. I think a lot of it came from, I was expecting this story of the cool. I had an idea in my mind of what it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more of like the guy coming out of the grave. I thought it was going to be a lot more like visual. And like, like really like story driven type thing. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was expecting. So that in combination with just very different production, unique production, and in combination with Lupe's lyrics, just whooping my ass again. I'm 0 for 2 <laughs> in understanding Lupe fiasco. But at the same time, fuck, I feel like I understand him perfectly. <laughs> this guy's great. This guy's great. I am, I am like right on the verge of just, it's such a positive, it's such a positive thing. And you know, what's really cool too is I've heard, I've heard plenty of people kind of talk shit on this album and Lupe, I go to his page. He's got 5 million monthly listeners. So he's not some massive, massive mega superstar, right? Whatever. Right. What the fuck ever. I think he works at MIT now, right? I think he teaches lyrics, songwriting. <sighs> But man, he, I just, I love the fact that he's doing what he wants to do. I love the fact that he even addresses it and dumb it down. That was just fucking cool, man. Very cool. Very cool album. I'm excited to listen to it again. Now that my own like kind of preconceived idea of what the album was gonna be, now that that's been pushed away, it's kind of my mind is cleared out. I can sit down and, and put it on again. And it'll be different. The next time I listen to it, it'll just sound different because my initial expectation has been washed away, which is good. Very good. Oh. Huh. Yeah. I just, I'm just kind of stewing all this right now. The cool and the uncool and go baby. and Really, I think there is a part of me that is sad because I want... I want a hundred million people to hear this. Just hear the last two songs. The last two. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of there. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of soaking right now. I guess I don't really have a whole lot to say for closing thoughts. That was great though. Very excited to listen to it more. Kind of reset. See how I feel. My favorite track is uh, the game though. Put you on game. Oh, fuck, it was so dark and so sinister and so well delivered. Just great. Great in how sinister it is. Okay, well, let's move on to some music videos. That will be Patreon only. If you're on YouTube, you want to see music videos, Patreon. Uh, I'll be honest, usually my music video reactions aren't that great. <laughs> really, 